So, a very good evening everyone, a very good evening everyone, I am Dr. Ankit Goyal, your psychiatry faculty at Prep Ladder, hello Utkarsh, hello Shitaj, a very good evening everyone, hope all of you are doing good, great. So, we will be talking about important session as the title is, we will talk about important questions and important things related with the upcoming INICT exam. Good evening Sharon, good evening Bishal, good evening. Shri Ram. So, a very good evening everyone. So, we will be starting the session in just a few minutes. Good evening Zia, good evening Dr. Kamalkar. Great. So, hope all of you are doing good. How is the preparation going for your IIT CT exam? <coughs> so, we will just wait for another few seconds and we will start. Good evening Hitesh, good evening core artist. So, good evening. Prakash. Right. So, you know what we will be going to discuss in this topic is, so as the INICT exam is approaching, in this session of psychiatry today, good evening Habib, in this session today what we are going to discuss is, good evening Ravi, we are going to discuss all the previous year questions which have been asked related to psychiatry. So, we will get an idea of what are the important topics or how the questions have been framed. In fact, while taking those questions, we will also discuss sometimes some questions come which we feel we have not read about. So, we will try to approach such questions also because many a times you know the answer. We will talk about some important images, some important image based questions. We will I will try to cover all the important high yielding topics important for your INICT exam. And a very, very important part of today's session is the FQs. So, FQs are the future questions which we may expect in the exams to come. So, this is some important points, some important upgradations. So, this will increase or it, this will add, you know, few notches to your preparation. So, let us start with the preparation. Let us start with the session. So, the first question is, <coughs> so let us take this first question, a patient is being assessed by a psychiatry resident patient is able to tell the date, is able to repeat digits after the examiner, but is unable to tell what he had in his breakfast. Which of the following statement is correct? Can anybody tell me what is the correct answer of this question? Anybody? So, in this question, we are talking about orientation, attention, recent memory. So, which of the options is correct? So, go through this question and tell me what is the correct answer? Anybody? So, three things the patient has been asked to do and few things he is able to tell and few things he is not able to tell. So, what are we dealing in this question with? We are dealing with what are known as higher mental functions. We are dealing with higher mental function or cognitive functions or cognitive functions. So, very good. So, many of you have answered A, some of you have answered D, very good. So, we are trying to assess cognitive functions here. So, in the MSc in the mental status examination, one part of the MSc is we, we see the higher mental function or the cognitive function. So, let us discuss, we will come to the answer very good. So, many of us have attempted this question, great. So, what is orientation? Basically, orientation is awareness of the self and surrounding and orientation we assess or we check orientation with respect to time, place and person. So, we ask the patient what is the time or what is the day, what is the date, what is the year, what is the month. So, we check the orientation with respect to time, place we ask the patient where is the patient right now, on what floor of the building the patient is right now and person we ask to identify the people around the patient. So, this is how we assess orientation, right. Now, very good. Now, in attention, now attention is basically ability to 
attend to a specific stimulus like in a classroom a teacher says pay attention to what I am saying. So, we assess attention by the test which is known as digit repetition test or digit span test where we give some digits or number to the patient and the person is asked to repeat those digits. We can ask the patient to re repeat in the digit forward test in the forward manner and digit backward in the backward manner. For example, I may give the, the patient these digit 2, 7. So, the patient has to repeat the digit in the forward manner. The patient will say 2, 7 and subsequently I will increase the number of digits. Normally, we say if the patient is able to digit 5 to 7 digit number, then the person's attention is intact. In digit backward, we ask the patient to repeat the digits in the backward manner. For example, if I say 2, 7, the patient has to repeat 7, 2. Here we say if the patient is able to repeat 3 to 5 digit number, we say it is normal. So, this is how we check attention. If you have to choose one test, you know if there both the tests have been given digit forward test and backward test, then we say digit forward test will be a better answer to check attention. Okay, so, this is how we check the attention. Great. Now, there is one more thing concentration. Concentration is ration, 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 ration. We see if the patient is able to maintain attention for a long time. The test which is done to check concentration is serial 7 subtraction test or 100 minus 7 test, wherein we tell the patient to keep on subtracting 100, 7 out of 100. Okay, so, patient continues to do this. So, let us say patient says 93, then the patient says 86. So, patient has to continue doing this. So, we say if the patient is able to repeat it at least do it 5 times correctly, then we say his concentration is intact. So, this is how we check concentration. We should know some of these important higher mental functions. Lastly, in the memory, so we check the memory of the patient. Now, memory again based on the duration, we divide it into 3 which is immediate memory. Immediate memory is the memory of the past few seconds. So, again here we do not have to do any specific test to check this. The test for attention and concentration also indirectly are checking the immediate memory. And again, if you have to choose one test, we can choose digit forward test as one of the tests to check immediate memory. Great. Now, in recent memory, recent memory is the memory of the past few minutes, hours or few days. Now, how do we check recent memory? Recent memory is checked with the test known as 24 hour recall method wherein we ask certain things which have happened in the past 24 hours. Very commonly we ask the patient what did he had in his last meal. Okay, so, suppose I ask you what all you know what did you had in your lunch today. So, what I am checking? I am checking recent memory. Remote memory means something which is far. So, remote is memory of the past few months or years. So, it is checked by asking personal information, personal information from the patient, very good, yes. Or sometimes historic events, okay, name three prime ministers, you know, past three prime ministers, certain historic events which have happened during the lifetime of the patient. Personal information like what is the name of your school, name of your wife, so all those things. So, this is how we check the remote memory. Now, let us come back to the question again. Now, can you answer this question? <coughs> so, when you ask the patient, he is able to tell the date. So, he is oriented to time. So, orientation is intact. He is able to repeat digits after the examination. So, what are we checking? We are giving some digits. This is di digit repetition test. But he is unable to tell what he had in his breakfast. Something which happened in the past few hours, he is not able to tell. So, now what is the correct answer? His orientation and attention seems to be intact, but his recent memory seems to be impaired. Yes, the correct answer here is option D. Is it clear to everyone? Right. Great. Now, let us come to the next question again. A very important topic. Again, this similar question was asked also in the last NEET PG exam. So, the question is a patient with diagnosis of schizophrenia not responding to haloperidone and thioridazine. Started on another medication drug A with side effects of celeria, dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia. This drug was stopped as the patient's WBC count was 2000, was 2000 per deciliter. So, what is the drug A? Very good. So, very good. All of you are correct? Yes. So, the answer is the right answer to this question is the drug A is nothing but clozapine. Again, psychopharmacology is one of the very important topics. Please remember 
psychopharmacology is one of the very important topics for your INICET exam and we are going to discuss some important new questions also I will discuss some very new drugs latest drugs which you may get in the exams as well in the session today right. So, let us learn about close up in again we will talk about some important clinical scenarios we have been discussing these scenarios and finally, there is a question a very good question such question may be asked. So, close up in it was the first atypical antipsychotics again it was basically we the drug was introduced in 1970s, but then the drug was stopped, but it was reintroduced. I will tell you why it was reintroduced. It is an antagonist. So, we know it is a second generation. It is an atypical antipsychotic. Atypical antipsychotic mechanism is D2 and 5-HT2A antagonism here, but it is more D4 to than D2. So, action is more on D4. It is one of the drugs with least EPS. It is one of the drugs with least EPS antipsychotic with anti suicidal property which is the drug which has anti suicidal property which antipsychotic this is the drug it has anti suicidal property name a mood stabilizer name a mood stabilizer which has anti suicidal property anyone which mood stabilizer had anti suicidal property can anybody tell me <coughs> which mood stabilizer has anti suicidal property close up in is the anti psychotic yes very good. So, another drug you should know yes lithium also has anti suicidal property now please remember. So, this drug was later on reintroduced for this one condition. So, we use it for treatment resistant schizophrenia treatment resistant schizophrenia means the patient is not responding to the conventional treatment. So, suppose we give one anti psychotic the patient at adequate dose and duration there is not much response. We give another antipsychotic again not much response. So, in those conditions if the patient is not able to respond on two or more antipsychotics then we use clozapine. I will tell you why we do not use as a first drug suppose a patient comes to me for the first time and has not been started on any antipsychotic in those drug naive patients we do not use clozapine. Okay, because it has some serious side effects. We will discuss about this. Yes, the answer another drug mood stabilizer with anti suicidal property is lithium. Very good. Now, let us talk about some important side effects. I will give you some important clinical scenarios which may be asked in the future exams. So, close up in some important side effects. Sedation is one of the is in fact the most common side effect. Mechanism is because of H1 blockage. Again, sometimes these mechanisms are asked. So, please you should be aware of some of these important mechanisms. Again, Hypersalivation or saliduria is one of the side effect. Okay, so patient has excessive salivation, especially this is more worrisome or more disturbing at the night time. So some of the important mechanisms proposed for this is it is because of M4 agonism, alpha 2 antagonism, and also it inhibits the swallowing reflex. So that is also one of the important reasons because of which hypersalivation is occurring. So, now suppose you get a question a patient is having <coughs> is on a drug antipsychotic let us say they give you clozapine and he is having hyper salivation what will you do. Now, again there are certain drugs like clonidine there are certain drugs like clonidine or amitriptyline which may be used which may be used, but one of the one of the simple strategies or in fact one of the first strategy or practical method which you can do is you can ask so when the patient wakes up in the morning he, you, you know the patient says that you know his pillow his bed sheet is soiled because of hyper salivation. So, one of the practical methods clinically which we do is we ask the patient to put a towel over his pillow to put a towel over his pillow it is one of the practical step which we do. So, you may be asked what is the next step which you may do. So, you can ask the patient so that the soiling of the of the pillow and the sheet is spared ok. So, this is again you should know very good yes. So, you should know how to address. So, such questions may also come and you may be asked the next step. So, you can ask this to do you can ask the patient to do this is it clear to everyone again important let us talk about some other side effects again hypotension can occur because of alpha antagonism constipation again a very important constipation again a very important side effect with clozapine it may occur 
and one of the met proposed mechanism is it is because of the anticholinergic properties. And of course, it is a second generation antipsychotic metabolic side effects like weight gain, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, these occur and one of the proposed mechanism is because of 5-HT2C antagonism. In fact, this point was asked in your last INICT exam. So, we will talk about that question also. Okay, so, these are some of the mechanism of some of the common side effects with clozapine. Now, as I told you clozapine was reintroduced. So, the person who is credited or who did study, you know again it was reintroduced for treatment resistant schizophrenia is John Kane or simply remember Kane. In fact, Kane also give criteria, so known as Kane's criteria for treatment resistant schizophrenia. So, this is one important name related with clozapine which you can remember Kane. Okay. <clears throat> now, what are the important serious side effects with clozapine? So, you can remember it with the acronym SAM. First is, so patient on clozapine may develop seizures. Okay. So, S is seizures. So, patient may develop seizures and it is a dose dependent adverse effect and very high when the dose is more than 600 milligram, more chances when the dose is high, more than 600 milligram. What is A? Very important serious side effect. Can anybody tell me what is A here? We will talk about some very important new drugs also, which are highly anticipated may come in the exam. Okay. So, what is A here? A is A granulocytosis. A granulocytosis. There is decreased WBC neutrophil, <coughs> especially the neutrophil count. So, in fact, when we start a patient on clozapine, we have to weekly monitor for the first 6 months the WBC, the absolute neutrophil count okay. and subsequently in the next 6 months we have to do it after every 2 weeks and after that we have to do it every 1 month. This is very important because this drug was when initially it was you know introduced in the market and it was withdrawn because this was one of the reasons why there were death with clozapine. Okay. So, a granulocytosis is very, very important and the last. So, so, clinical scenario you may get a patient is on a drug and the patient is complaining of sore throat, the patient is complaining of infection. So, what you may suspect there is infection because of a granulocytosis. Okay. So, such clinical scenarios may be asked in the exams as well. Okay. Yes, dose dependent means it is dose dependent. The higher the dose, higher the risk. Okay. And another clinical scenario patient is on clozapine complaining of chest pain there is abnormal ECG what is this another serious side effect which may occur because of clozapine anyone what is the serious side effect I am talking about this is M M is myocarditis both agranulocytosis and myocarditis are idiosyncratic they are not dependent on the dose so these are three important serious side effects so another important question let us let me ask you another question let, let us say they say a patient is on clozapine and he has developed seizures. Okay, the patient has developed seizure. Okay. Also, one point about agranulocytosis, usually we, we stop it when the WBC count is less than 3000 per millimeter cube and the ANC count is less than 1500 per millimeter cube. Okay. So, the clinical scenario is a patient on clozapine develops seizure and you are plan planning to start an anti-epileptic drug. Which of the following anti-epileptic drugs you would not give with clozapine? So, this is the question. Yes, great. Yes, Dr. Priyanka sharing. Yes, it is myocarditis. So, what will be the answer? Which anti-epileptic drug you would avoid with clozapine? Again, another FQ, such questions may come in the exam. Such clinical scenarios, such drug interactions may be asked. So, what is that drug which you will not give with clozapine as an anti-epileptic drug if the patient has developed seizure? Anyone? Very good. <clears throat> it is carbamazepine. Yes. So, let us talk about <coughs> some contraindications. Okay. So, some contraindications for clozapine when WBC count is less than 3500 per millimeter cube, we do not start clozapine. There is a previous bone marrow disorder, history of agranulocytosis during clozapine treatment. This is very important. Use of another bone marrow suppressant like carbamazepine. So, this combination can be fatal because again carbamazepine may cause, so again bone marrow suppression, it can cause agranulocytosis. So, this is a very fatal combination. So, do not use carbamazepine with clozapine. So, this is another important FQ which may be asked in your exam. Okay. So, we are going to discuss some of, some of these questions so that it <coughs> gives an edge 
for your you know exams again such questions have been asked so that is why such clinical scenarios may also be asked in the future exams is it clear to everyone <coughs> now let me go back to the question so again so the question is okay so the question answer is close up in anybody can anybody tell me this is thioridazine what is thioridazine it's a first generation antipsychotic now since we're talking about you know images may be asked okay so it may come as a ophthalmology question okay there is you know with thioridazine what ophthalmology you know side effect or complication you see with thioridazine anybody anybody can anybody tell me i side effect with thioridazine anybody what is the effect with thioridazine thioridazine is a first generation antipsychotic please remember again it's it's it has a r yes it has a r okay that is eps very good are there good attempt yes that's an eps motor side effect we'll talk about that okay in the eye if you see an ophthalmologist look in the eye what kind of complication or what side effect may be there because of thioridazine it has a r please remember retinal retinal pigmentation retinal pigmentation so there may be retinal pigmentation shown in the image and you are asked which drug may be responsible thioridazine there is another there is another first generation antipsychotic chlorpromazine chlorpromazine can anybody tell me what what ophthalmology changes may be seen with chlorpromazine anybody what changes may be seen with chlorpromazine with it's a first generation first generation or a typical antipsychotic typical antipsychotics they have a d2 antagonist effect chlorpromazine in fact has other mechanisms also other blockage also it also blocks alpha it also bl blocks muscarinic it also blocks histaminic receptors so that leads to side effect in fact this is one of your questions inict question this was a question asked chlorpromazine blocks it blocks d2 of course that is the mechanism of action it blocks alpha so alpha receptor block there will be hypotension muscarinic blockage there will be anticholinergic side effect histaminic blockage there will be sedation so it blocks all these receptors these are responsible for side effects okay so what are the eyes what are the changes in the eye with chlorpromazine anybody so please remember c for chlorpromazine c for corneal c for corneal and lenticular lenticular deposits okay <clears throat> okay yes so deposits on cornea as well as the lens okay while thioridazine there are retinal pigmentation okay so please remember some of these important points chlorpromazine has been asked previously also in your inict exam only is it clear to everyone okay great let's move to the next question all of the following are good prognostic factors in schizophrenia again a previous repeat except so what is the correct answer what is the correct answer of this question you have to tell except so which of the following is not a not a good prognostic factor so what is the answer of this question let us let us see the prognostic factors let us briefly see prognostic factors in schizophrenia again a very important topic we talk about outcome what factors are responsible for good outcome and what are responsible for poor outcome so when we talk about the outcome so again acute or abrupt onset if the onset is early, is is quick within few days or within two weeks if the onset is fast or acute we say it has a good prognosis while if someone has a slow onset slow onset of symptoms patient symptoms develop takes months or years then we say it has a bad prognosis very good yes so the correct answer here is yes c is the answer we'll talk let us talk about some other list of these factors again important to remember again late age of onset someone develops schizophrenia at a late age okay and what is late age late onset schizophrenia i'm talking about late onset schizophrenia can anybody tell me what is late onset schizophrenia late onset schizophrenia is when the onset occurs after 45 years okay here i'm saying late age maybe in the late 30s 40s the patient develops schizophrenia again it has good prognosis while early onset has a poor prognosis again subtypes catatonic 
paranoid subtypes they have good prognosis you should also know this that the subtypes of schizophrenia have been now removed both in dsm 5 and even in icd 11 both have now removed dsm had already removed even icd 11 has removed okay but you should know again catatonic paranoid schizophrenia has a good prognosis best prognosis is with catatonic schizophrenia simple hebephrenic they have poor prognosis again females have a good prognosis while males have a poor prognosis prominent positive symptoms good prognosis prominent negative symptoms poor prognosis okay now let's try to remember this presence of mood symptoms presence of mood symptoms so a patient having schizophrenia is appearing depressed or is appearing very happy so if there is presence of some mood symptoms we say it is a good prognosis while absence of mood symptoms is a poor prognosis again please remember these are some important points which they at times trick you with okay family history of mood disorder if someone has a family history of mood disorder let us say a patient with schizophrenia has a family member let us say his mother having depression or father having bipolar disorder has a good prognosis as compared to someone with a family history of schizophrenia again these are two important points sometimes we confuse we get confused with okay some other factors like someone who is married is a good prognosis as compared to someone who is unmarried or divorced or separated is a poor prognostic factor good social support is good prognosis poor social support is poor prognosis good pre morbid functioning someone before the illness before the morbidity his functioning was good it is good prognosis while someone who had poor pre morbid functioning even before the illness his functioning was not so good then it is bad prognostic factor employment is again good unemployed is poor and lastly precipitating factor suppose schizophrenia occurred because of some factor let us say there was a financial crisis or there was some death of a family member there was a precipitating event so that is a good prognostic factor while if the precipitating factors are absent it is a bad prognostic factor so this is a list of important prognostic factors again very very important topic very very important topic so let us see let us go back to the question so late onset yes it is a good prognosis positive symptoms it is a good prognosis associated with depression so presence of mood symptom is a good prognosis prognostic factor now what is early what is early onset schizophrenia can anybody tell me what is early onset schizophrenia the term early onset schizophrenia so we know late onset is when it is more than 45 years what is early onset schizophrenia does anybody know what is early onset schizophrenia <coughs> early onset schizophrenia is when it occurs before 18 years it include includes childhood onset childhood onset and and adolescent onset okay it includes childhood onset as well as adolescent onset so it is known as early onset schizophrenia what is childhood onset schizophrenia childhood onset schizophrenia anybody can anybody tell me what is childhood onset schizophrenia when would we say that a person is having childhood onset schizophrenia onset before what age onset before 13 years okay so these are some important points you can remember okay so i hope this question is clear less than very good yes jelly is good attempt less than 13 okay right so let's talk about this next question again psychopharmacology is very very important a patient with delusion of persecution and third person auditory hallucination diagnosed with schizophrenia so they've told you the diagnosis was started on 2 mg daily dose of resperidon <clears throat> what is resperidon it's a second generation antipsychotic and patient presented to you with upward gait palsy after the last night dose <clears throat> so something has happened after taking antipsychotic some motor side effect has happened what is the next step in management so first tell me what is the diagnosis here what is the diagnosis here so patient has developed some motor side effects patient has developed some motor side effects patient has developed eps very good 
Yes, the correct answer is yes, it is injection promethazine. So, let us try to understand what is happened. <coughs> so, extra pyramidal symptoms which occur because of blockage of dopamine in the nigrostriatal path, we will talk about that. Okay, so, patient has developed sudden, sudden acute contraction of muscle, acute dystonia has happened. This is one, in fact, one of the earliest, this is one of the earliest side effect which occurs, okay, and in fact, with parental drugs like IV, IM, it may occur even in few minutes, okay. So, it may occur in the form of patient may have uprolled eyes, there may be oculogyric crisis, okay, or there may be patient may come with such sudden contraction of the muscles of the neck, torticollis, patient may come with torticollis, in severe cases patient may even come with laryngospasm, laryngospasm, okay and other muscles may be affected, ok. So, what is the treatment? Treatment is anticholinergic drug, we may give patient promethazine injectable, we may give and there it may resolve, it will resolve the acute dystonia. So, the patient had developed acute dystonia. Let us understand some of the other extra pyramidal symptoms, again this is a very important topic, this is a very very important topic for your INICT exam. So, next is drug induced Parkinsonism. Okay, so, patient may develop symptoms of tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia and again the treatment is patient may be given anticholinergic drugs like trihexyphenidyl. Okay. Now, another patient comes with restlessness, patient reports that I am having restlessness, patient is pacing around, is not able to sit at one place, is having you know such swaying movements may be there. So, patient appears to be restless and the patient is also saying that I am appear, I am, I am inside I am feeling restless. So, there is also a subjective feeling of restlessness. So, what is this? What is this phenomena? This is akathisia. This is akathisia which occurs. This is akathisia. This is the most common EPS and the drug of choice, drug of choice for Ekathesia is again important to remember is propranolol. So, patient on antipsychotic complaining of these symptoms of restlessness, subjective and objective symptoms of restlessness, this is ekathesia. Is it clear to everyone? This is ekathesia. Then next is tardive dyskinesia. What is the meaning of tardive? Tardive means long term. Dyskinesia means abnormal movement. So, this is tardive dyskinesia. So, patient may have such lip smacking movement such movements around the mouth may have such chewing movements, okay. So, such movements, such dyskinetic movements which occur after long term use of antipsychotic, this is tardive dyskinesia, again treatment is we may use dopamine depleters like valbenazine, tetrabenazine, valbenazine, tetrabenazine, okay. So, these are the important drugs which may be used. Another very, very important and in fact, a life threatening condition which may occur is known as neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Okay. So, a patient on an antipsychotic comes with increased temperature, there is increased CPK, creatinine phosphokinase, rigidity is there, sweating is there, then patient may be appearing disoriented. What is this? What is this important side effect? This is NMS, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, as the name suggests, malignant, it is life threatening. And the drug of choice is dantrolin. Drug of choice is dantrolin. Okay, it's a skeletal muscle relaxant. Okay, then dopamine agonists, dopamine agonist like bromocryptin, amantadine, they may also be used. So these are important. This is an important list of EPS which may occur with antipsychotic. EPS are more prone to develop with the first generation than with the second generation antipsychotic. So, again very, very important table, please read this table and please read the EPS, very, very important questions may be asked as the question which was asked. So, the answer is the patient has a upward gaze palsy, so patient has developed acute dystonia, patient has developed acute dystonia. So, what we will use, we will not use lorazepam, phenytoin or no, reassurances will not be of any use, we will give injection promethazine, okay. So, the right answer is B. So, we also discuss some of the important EPS along with this. Now, this is again a very interesting question. To solve such question, you should know the basics, okay. So, match the drug with their effect. This is again your question of the last exam. 
So, some very important concept we will discuss. So, can anybody answer this question? What is the right answer? What is the right answer? You have to match the drug the, with their effects. Okay. So, the action with the effect. So, what is the right answer of this question? Again, very important. So, let us understand some of the basic concept. Now, when we talk about antipsychotics, we talk about four pathways. Two pathways are related with the symptoms of dopamine pathway we are talking about and two pathways are related with the side effects. So, the two pathways that is mesolimbic pathway, mesolimbic means it starts from meso midbrain that is the ventral tegmental area and it goes to the limbic okay, or the nucleus accumbens. Here it is seen that there is increase in dopamine in this pathway in a patient with schizophrenia which is responsible for positive symptoms which is responsible for positive symptoms that is delusions and hallucinations. Then there is another pathway dopamine pathway mesocortical pathway. Mesocortical pathway is from again midbrain to the cortex to the prefrontal cortex. Here it is seen that there is a decrease in dopamine which leads to negative symptoms. Name some negative symptoms of schizophrenia anybody? Name some negative symptoms of schizophrenia. What are the negative symptoms? such as anhedonia, such as elogia, such as evolution, elogia, asociality. Okay? So, these are important negative symptoms which occur because of decrease in dopamine. Nigrostriatal pathway if we talk about, again very very important two, two of these pathways you can correlate with the side effects. So, nigrostriatal pathway it goes from substantia nigra to the striatum. Okay? Now, if you to understand the side effect, let us correlate with you know some disease. So, Parkinson's disease. So, normally in Parkinson's disease, we see that there are some motor side motor symptoms like tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia, and the treatment which we give in Parkinson, like we give levodopa. So, there is a decrease in dopamine, and we give so in Parkinson's disease, there is a decrease in dopamine in this pathway, okay, which leads to motor symptoms which leads to motor symptom. Now, let us correlate this with a patient who is on antipsychotic. So, antipsychotics are D2 antagonist, first generation is D2 antagonist, second generation is D2 and 5-HT2A antagonist. So, what are they doing? They are decreasing dopamine also in this pathway. So, it will lead to motor side effects which are known as EPS. So, this is the actual reason of EPS, one of the reasons for EPS, right. Now, let us try to understand. Now, in this pathway, dopamine is inversely proportional to acetylcholine. So, in this pathway, dopamine is inversely proportional to acetylcholine. Now, in the treatment, in the treatment of EPS, what we do? In the treatment of EPS, we are giving anticholinergic drugs. Okay, we are giving anticholinergic drugs. So, we are giving muscarinic antagonist. We are decreasing acetylcholine. So, subsequently what are we doing in the treatment? We are increasing dopamine which is required. So, this is one important concept. Again, we will use this concept to solve this question as well. Okay? I hope this is clear to everyone how EPS or how these motor side effects occur with antipsychotics. Now, also there is another pathway, tuberoinfundibular pathway. So, tuberoinfundibular pathway, it goes from the thalamus to the anterior pituitary, to the anterior pituitary. Now, again a simple a physiology question which has been asked also in the previous exam, dopamine and prolactin are inversely related. So, now what we are doing, we are giving a patient antipsychotics which are decreasing dopamine also in this pathway. So, what is happening? Dopamine is getting block antagonist. So, what will happen? There will be significant increase in prolactin, hyperprolactinemia. So, a lot of your sexual side effects, a lot of your sexual side effects or certain other side effects. For example, in females who are on antipsychotics, they may complain of galactoria, they may complain of amenorrhea, cessation of menses, excessive secretion of milk. This is again because of increase in the prolactin. Okay? And both in males and females, there may be decreased libido 
ओके सेक्शुअल साइड इफेक्ट्स में ऑल्सो अकर सो दिस इज अकरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पाथवे सो दिस इज सम वन इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यूल बी एबल टू आंसर सम ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस बेसिक्स नाउ लेट अस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज डी टू एंटेगोनिज्म इज लीडिंग टू रिडक्शन ऑफ पॉजिटिव सिम्टम येस इट इज करेक्ट एज वी हैव लर्न दैट इन द मिजोलिमिक पाथवे देर इज इंक्रीज इन डोपामीन which is leading to positive symptoms so antagonist is decreasing those symptoms then next so let us see option c m1 antagonism is using leading to reduction of eps that is also correct we have just learned in the in the nigrostriatal pathway that the anticholinergic drugs they are increasing dopamine leading to reduce in the eps 5 ht blockage leading to metabolic side effect we have learned even in the clozapine that 5ht2c in fact is leading to metabolic side effect now next is last is 5ht2 antagonism increasing dopaminergic activity now let's try to understand this second generation antipsychotics they are d2 antagonist and 5ht2a antagonist right and we know and we know that the second generation antipsychotics they have less eps so one of the reason is because 5ht2a antagonist action it increases dopamine increases the dopaminergic activity which leads to less eps as compared to the first generation so option b is match with 2 so what is the right answer here the right answer is option a so this is again a very important topic such question this is a question of the last exam only you should know such concepts so that you are able to answer these is it clear to everyone right next question a patient comes with voluntary purposeless movements negativism waxy flexibility what is the appropriate treatment tell me first tell me what is the what are the symptoms here what type of symptoms are seen in this patient for first tell me what are the symptoms which are seen in this patient this is again an important topic we'll talk about this so what are the important what is what are these symptoms cluster of symptoms what are these known as anybody <coughs> so first tell me what are the symptoms you are seeing negativism you are seeing waxy flexibility okay there are some purposeless movements so what are these symptoms okay you are saying answer is c let us see what the answer is first let's try to understand what are these symptoms known as yes they are known as catatonic symptoms catatonic symptoms now can you tell me the answer very good now can you tell me the answer what will be the answer so what is the most appropriate treatment for catatonic symptoms catatonic symptoms are group of motor sign and symptoms which may be seen in various conditions like schizophrenia in mood disorder in fact mood disorder they are more common than schizophrenia okay in fact now it has been given a separate diagnosis catatonia you can make catatonia as a separate diagnosis so the right answer is yes the answer is d lorazepam treatment of catatonia treatment of catatonic symptom is lorazepam lorazepam <clears throat> and also we can give ect okay so initially lorazepam is usually given parenterally and subsequently we can shift to oral okay and also ect may be used first line is we start with lorazepam is it clear to everyone so let us try to just understand some of these catatonic symptoms you should know these symptoms there is stupor stupor that the patient has very significantly low psychomotor activity so the motor activity psychomotor activity is very low then patient may have excitement patient may have excitement in excitement it is just the opposite the patient has high psychomotor activity mutism mutism is when the patient is not speaking as if you are muted just like you can mute the television you muted the patient patient is doing activity but he is not speaking now next a very important image based question which may be asked if you see this image try to see this image patient is maintaining a very abnormal posture maintaining a very abnormal posture and many a times patient may maintain this posture for long hours so what is this what is this known as this may be called catalepsy or posturing this may be called catalepsy or posturing the difference is if the patient if someone else if someone else 
has made the had made the patient to come into the posture if it is passive we call it as catalepsy and if the patient himself has come into this posture as now is maintaining it if it is a active phenomena it is posturing very good yes catalepsy and posturing cataplexy is something else it is seen in narcolepsy where there is sudden loss of muscle tone okay so this is catalepsy or posturing so such ms based question may also be asked waxy flexibility person can be molded like a wax candle negativism what is negativism again such clinical scenarios may be asked negativism is when the person is either not you not say doing what you are asking me to do or he is doing just the opposite you tell the patient to come forward he is either he is giving no response he is not doing anything or he is going backwards this is negativism automatic obedience is the patient is doing automatically he is obedient to you whatever you are telling him he will he will do that so this is automatic obedience ecolalia and ecopraxia again important eco means repeating lalia means word so patient is mimicking whatever you are saying so you tell the patient what is your name the patient will say what is your name what do you do what do you do this is eco lalia eco praxia is eco means repeat and praxia means movement so whatever you are doing the patient is also copying your movement this is eco praxia next is mannerisms and stereotypy these are both repetitive odd movements which the patient do the difference is mannerisms the word has manner is manner that means these movements are purposeful these movements are purposeful for example this movement the patient is repeatedly doing this this is salute movement now it has become odd and repetitive it is mannerism stereotypies are non purposeful movement very common example is these midline movements can anybody tell me these midline hand movements where in child psychiatry you see these movements in child psychiatry where you may find these movements in autism which which syndrome in red syndrome if you read red syndrome there are hand wringing movement these are stereotypies then grimacing grimacing is when you take a selfie these days what do you do you pout so if you pout for a long time so if you maintain odd odd facial feature for a long time this is grimacing and lastly it is ambi tendency ambi tendency means inability to decide a movement for example there is a pen on the table the patient is putting his hand forward then backward forward then backward as if he is stuck he is not able to decide whether he should pick it up or not pick it up these are group of catatonic symptoms so again you should also know the catatonic symptoms many a times question is asked just on these symptoms so again very very important topic i hope this is clear to everyone now let's talk about the next question a patient is brought with symptoms of anxiety palpitation sweating breathlessness chest pain feeling that she may die may might have a heart attack or she there is a feeling of impending doom patient had 5 to 6 episodes in a month 30 minutes each since 6 months what is the likely diagnosis so this is again a question which was asked in your neat pg exam last exam can anybody tell me what is the right answer of this question <clears throat> what is the correct answer yes very good so this is yes this is panic disorder i hope there is no there is no doubt that it is not a panic disorder even if the patient has said that the patient feels that i am having a heart attack or the patient may report of feeling of impending doom such episodes have been occurring continuously repeatedly such episodes have been occurring okay so this is panic disorder so just a brief view again i am sure you we know about pan anxiety disorders <coughs> just a brief description so anxiety disorder again we can club into three one is panic disorder okay one we can the next three we can club in one category that is situational anxiety so they occur when there is a situation and then there is generalized anxiety disorder so i'll tell you few key points about each of them so that we can differentiate panic disorder there is sudden onset of intense anxiety the patient develops suddenly <coughs> there is anxiety with a feeling of impending doom oh my god i am about to die and these episodes these episodes may last for some minutes okay may last for 20 to 30 minutes and then after that the patient may become all well so they occur episodically like this 
they occur like this and in between the patient is normal as in the case in between the patient is absolutely normal so recurrent panic attacks panic disorder while generalized anxiety disorder please remember in generalized anxiety disorder as the name suggests there is persistent anxiety which is also known as free floating anxiety free floating anxiety so patient has excessive worries <laughs> So, if you get question where the patient is worried, you know, oh my god, my husband is late from office, what might have happened to him? My children are late from school, oh my god, what might have happened to them? Okay, a person is worrying, oh my god, if my you know, family member may die in an accident. So, there is lots of worries. This is generalized anxiety disorder. It may occur continuously. Okay, so it may occur continuously. This is again panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. Situational anxiety, again, three important disorders are here agoraphobia, specific phobia and social phobia or social anxiety disorder. So, these anxiety disorders occur when there is certain specific situation. <coughs> I hope these situations all of you know these situations agoraphobia, specific phobia and social phobia. Agoraphobia is when there are two or more of these five situations in which the patient develops anxiety. Please remember if there is one situation then we will not call it as agoraphobia. It has to be at least two of these. Okay, then we call it as agoraphobia. Okay, it is agoraphobia. The next is so again public transport, open you know spaces, closed spaces, crowd or in a line, or someone is you know alone out of the home. If in these five situations, out of two situations, patient develop anxiety, it is agoraphobia. Then specific phobia, as the name suggests, fear of specific object or situation. Let's you know let's just understand few of them. What is allurophobia? What is allurophobia? So, what is allurophobia? Anybody? It is fear of cats. Claustrophobia, fear of closed space. So, please see if the patient has only fear of closed space, then it is specific phobia. But if patient has fear of closed space and let us say also fear of a public transport, then it becomes agoraphobia. Nyctophobia is your NEAT PG 2019. So, nocturnal guy, thank you. So, that is a Nice name. Okay. So, what is nyctophobia? Can anybody tell me what is nyctophobia? Anybody? This is your NEET PG 2019 question. Fear of dark or night. Sinophobia, fear of dogs. So, again there is a you know big list of this. So, you should know these specific phobias. And social phobia is a social anxiety disorder when a patient has fear of social situation. So, for example, patient going in a wedding is fearful and avoids going to a wedding or to a conference. Actual fear is fear of embarrassment. That person may not do something there which may embarrass him in front of others or in front of strangers. So, see if the person is having anxiety in certain specific situations, then we have to think of these three disorders. Is it clear to everyone? So, these are some important points about anxiety disorder. Let us take this next question. A 21 year old female is brought in the clinic by her mother whose symptoms are consistent with depression. On examination, she presents with increased body weight following clinical sign noted as shown in the image below. <coughs> so, we have two points. So, she is a female with depression. Now, we, we know that she has increased body weight and you can see a, a sign in the image. So, what is the, what is the diagnosis here? What is the diagnosis here? <coughs> Very good. Very good. So, first let us try to understand what is this sign, what is this sign, can anybody tell me? What are you seeing on the knuckles? You are seeing callus, you are seeing injury on the knuckles. So, what is this sign known as, can anybody tell me? Very good, very good, yes Adya, Sharon, Shitij, very good. It is, <coughs> it seems to be CES, good. Can you tell me what is this sign known as? This is known as Russell sign. This is known as Russell sign, which occurs because of repeated self-induced purging, okay, because of the injury, which may occur because of self-induced vomiting. Now, can anybody tell me, if, so please remember this, even in, even in anorexia nervosa, we have two subtypes. One is restricted type and the other is binge eating purging. Even there also, you may get this Russell sign. So, why are you choosing bulimia nervosa and not anorexia nervosa here? Why? Very good. Yes, very good. So, why are you not choosing anorexia nervosa here and why are you choosing bulimia nervosa here. Very good. Yes, you are correct. It is Russell sign. Great. So, can anybody tell me why are you choosing bulimia over anorexia here? Please remember, even in anorexia you can get this sign <coughs> because there is a subtype. 
बिंज ईटिंग पर्जिंग सब टाइप प्लीज रिमेंबर हेयर द वेट वेरी गुड येस द वेट वेरी गुड द बी एम आई इट इज इंक्रीज इन एनोरेक्सिया नर्वोसा द बी एम आई इज लो वेरी गुड वेरी गुड सो दिस इज बुलिमिया नर्वोसा सो बुलिमिया नर्वोसा पेशेंट मोस्टली सी मोर कॉमन इन फीमेल्स देन मेल्स ओके सो अगेन हेयर वॉट इज हैपनिंग पेशेंट हैज एपिसोड ऑफ बिंज ईटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ बिंज ईटिंग फॉलोड बाय फॉलोड बाय कंपनसेटरी मकैनिजम्स फॉलोड बाय कंपनसेटरी मकैनिजम्स ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेल्फ इंड्यूज वॉमिटिंग यूज ऑफ लैगजेटिव डायोरेटिक समटाइम्स इवन एक्सेसिव एक्सरसाइज और डाइटिंग मे बी सम कंपनसेटरी मकैनिजम्स नाउ सम ऑफ द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस सम ऑफ द कॉम्प्लिकेशंस विच द पेशेंट मे डिवेलप बिकॉज ऑफ सेल्फ इंड्यूज्ड वॉमिटिंग ओके so if you see the dental hygiene of the patient the dental hygiene is very poor because repeatedly the acidic content is coming in the mouth so there may be dental caries dental caries you may get swollen parotid glands so again in the image you may be given parotitis parotitis may be there and yes we have discussed russell sign very good russell sign is there now also if we see what kind of you know whether there will be acidosis or alkalosis in these patients anybody what kind of complication will be there will be acidosis or alkalosis you may get hypokalemic hypochloremic so chloride ion is getting out from the stomach what you will get you will get alkalosis or acidosis you will get good yes you will get alkalosis so such question may be asked you may be given certain parameters and you may have to see whether it is acidosis or alkalosis so alkalosis acidic content is going out of the stomach okay yes very good dr akil yes 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 adya so is it clear to everyone this is bulimia nervosa again generally treatment is uh, opd based okay the patient generally accepts the condition and usually we start with cbt and drugs like ssris may be used now another important eating disorder anorexia nervosa <clears throat> few points about anorexia nervosa question was asked in your previous aims exam i'll talk about another point which may be asked so i'll talk about some extra points in these cases so that if such question come you are able to answer them so anorexia nervosa again females more than males here what happens is there is restriction of energy intake so person does not eat energy rich food leading to decrease in the weight there is a decrease in the bmi of the patient in fact icd 11 says that the bmi is less than 18.5 kg per meter square there is fear of fatness the patient fears that the person may become fat and there is a disturbance of body image although the person is very thin the bmi is very low but the person feels that my that i am very fat or i am normal also that may be also be the 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 body image the person may have okay so these are the important three symptoms which are seen so please see there is decrease in the weight decrease in the bmi very very important there was another fourth criteria which now has been removed which has now has been removed what it was that it was amenorrhea amenorrhea so cessation of menses was also there as a criteria that has now been removed so in these patient they are in a state of starvation so all the signs and symptoms of starvation may be seen mortality of these patients are very high in fact the book says the mortality is as high as any psychiatric condition so it is one of the psychiatric disorders with highest mortality and mortality is because of complications the patient is not eat, eating enough food so there are so many complications suicide also is one of the one of the cause but most more common cause is complications because of restricting food because of restriction of energy intake so this is again an important question these patient may be difficult to treat and many a times we may require hospitalization so this is a very important slide one question we will discuss which has been asked and one maybe a future point may be asked in your question so hospitalization may be required in these patients so my purpose will also be in this session today to give you some extra advantage or some extra points which may be beneficial for you so again hospitalization may be required because of complications like dehydration electrolyte imbalance also patients who are 20% below the normal weight for height again in those patients also we hospitalize so there was a question in aims that a patient is admitted with anorexia nervosa and given adequate calories but the patient after one week is not showing any increase in weight so what will you do will you increase the calorie will you add some Antidepressant and some anti-anxiolytic, 
or observe the patient for 2 hours f after each meal. So, the answer was this observe the patient for 2 hours after each meal. So, as I told you even in anorexia nervosa the patient may have two subtypes one is restrictive type and the other is binge eating purging here also it can occur. So, what if the patient after each meal is purging out the food. So, this is a this is a AIMS question previous question which has been asked. Now, also when we start when we give calories we may start with 1500 to 1800 kilo calories a day ok. 1800 kilo calories a day and subsequently we increase the calorie. Now, patient in a state when the patient is not eating and suddenly we are introducing food and sometimes if it has occurred in a fast rate it may lead to what is known as refeeding syndrome. It may lead to refeeding syndrome. So, you may be given some of the parameters. So, there is an increase in the metabolic rate you are giving food and if it is you know high amount is given or a high rate it is given it may lead to decrease in phosphate decrease in potassium decrease in magnesium. It may also lead to thymine deficiency, thymine deficiency also sometimes it can lead to cardiac arrhythmias ok. So, these are some important points these may be asked in the questions you know. So, again you may get such questions also. So, patient with anorexia nervosa or with the eating disorder the patient is showing these these changes what what may you may suspect this is refeeding syndrome. So, you have to give at a slow rate and gradually we have to increase it ok. So, this is again these are some important complications again it has high mortality anorexia nervosa ok. Again a very important topic right now let us talk about this next topic. So, in the in this topic I will discuss one very important question which you may get because this is a very very important FQ we will talk about that after this question you may get in your exam. Now, first let us talk about this question ok let us talk about this question this is a repeat question which of the following is exclusively seen in females ok Rett syndrome, Asperger's, Heller, autism ok all these are under autism spectrum disorder yes the correct answer is Rett syndrome ok. Under the autism spectrum disorder, so autism spectrum disorder previously known as pervasive developmental disorder. Now, both ICD 11 and DSM 5 uses these terms, ok. So, now both of them use the term autism spectrum disorder. Under this di disorder comes like autism, Rett syndrome, Heller syndrome, Asperger's. Now, we give this term autism spectrum disorder. So, we clubbed all these com similar disorder into this single entity autism spectrum disorder two common features which these patients have is there is a deficit in social communication and there is a restrictive repetitive pattern of behavior ok. These are the two important core features. Rett syndrome, Rett syndrome is more common in females than males. Now, what is interesting about Rett syndrome is the first five months there is normal development. So, you do not find any abnormality in the initial five months abnormality starts from 6 month onwards. So, from 6 months to 2 months the patient the child may have stereotypic movement known as hand wringing midline movements as we have just discussed and there is there may be decrease in the head circumference circumference. So, what you find the finding is microcephaly this point has been asked many times in the exams ok. In fact, previous exams this question has been asked. So, if I ask you microcephaly at birth seen in red syndrome is it true or false microcephaly seen at birth is it true or false? It is false, it is not seen at birth ok. Then loss of speech, muscle coordination, ataxia <coughs> ok and these patient may also develop seizures may be up to even 75 percent of the patient may develop seizures ok. So, this is Rett syndrome yes that was false very good yes yeah. all these are more common in males than females except Rett syndrome. In fact, most of the child psychiatry disorders like even ADSD they are more common in boys than girls. Rett syndrome is an important exception ok. So, this is important an important known genetic risk factor for Rett syndrome is MECP2 gene chromosome XP28. So, it is one of the known genetic factor risk factor for Rett syndrome ok. Now, till the time now, I will talk about that in the next question. So, this is Rett syndrome is it clear to everyone a very important topic. Now, this is a very important FQ now let me see if you can answer this. Trophenetide is a drug used for which of the following condition this question may again may come in your upcoming exams very very important you know something which is trending you put a hashtag. 
So it's a hashtag question, very very important. What is the answer of this question? Anybody? Trophenetide. Have you know? Have you he heard of this drug? Trophenetide. What is the answer? This is again a very important question. You may get such question, you know, in your in your exam, INICT upcoming exam. What is this drug used used for? ADHD, SLD, Red syndrome, intellectual disability. Okay. So please remember this is a very very important drug. So let us let us talk about this is trophenetide. So with the brand name debut, you may remember the brand name as well. It's a it's a peptide trophenetide. The name is telling you it's a tripeptide glycine proline glutamic acid. It's an analog of amino terminal tripeptide of IGF one. Okay, it's an analog of the amino terminal tripeptide of IGF one. What is IGF one? What is IGF one? Anybody? What is IGF one? It is insulin-like growth factor one. Okay, <clears throat> so it has anti-inflammatory properties. It stimulates synaptic maturation. So this drug is used. This drug is used for a very very important condition that is Rett syndrome. Very good. So this is one drug which has been recently approved. Just <coughs> in on I think tenth of March twenty twenty three. It has recently been approved. So up till now we didn't have any treatment, any drug for this condition. Now we have a drug, we have a FDA approved drug. It is used for children for more than two, two years of age. Okay. So this is a very very important drug, 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 drug trials, and finally this drug has been approved. So this is a very very important future question which may come in your exam. It is used for Rett syndrome, and in fact other conditions also it is now being studied. And they are on the phase in the on the trial phase. Let us see if they get approved or not. So this is one very important drug. So please remember this drug. This name is very important. Which of the following are subcortical dementia? Again, INICT 2020 question. What is the right answer? So many times I always say, look into the name. If you see the name, many times the answer will be there. So the options are Parkinson's disease, Wilson's, Huntington's, Pick's disease. Okay, so what is the right answer of this question? Anybody? What is another name of Pick's disease? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what is another name of Pick's disease? It is known as frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia. So if you know this fact also, then also maybe you will be able to solve it. Okay. So, what is the right answer? So, Pick's disease would be a cortical dementia. The name is telling you frontal and temporal lobe. So, what is the right answer? Rest all three, A, B, and C. They are cortical dementia. Pick's disease is a Pick's very good. Yes, Pick's disease is a sub is is a cortical dementia. Okay, the name is telling you frontotemporal dementia. So, cortical dementia and subcortical dementia basically mean that they at the initial presentation which is affected. In cortical dementia, the cortex is affected, while in subcortical, initially the subcortical region like the basal ganglia, thalamus, those are affected. Of course, in the in the long term, the other regions are also affected. So, some examples of cortical dementia like Alzheimer's disease, Alzheimer's dementia, Pick's disease, as we had discussed, Pick's disease. Some of the examples of subcortical dementia like Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease. Okay, like Wilson's disease, Wilson's disease, okay. Multiple sclerosis, Huntington's chorea, okay. PSP, progressive supranuclear supranuclear palsy. Now please see, all these disorders, subcortical dementia, in the initial clinical presentation, what do you get? You more of the motor system is more involved. Parkinson's disease, you get tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia because the subcortical area is affected. Okay, subcortical area. So clinically, also suppose you get a patient with a lot of motor symptoms, then again it may be a subcortical dementia. Okay, so this is important. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear to everyone? Cortical dementia and subcortical dementia. Now I'll talk about this Lewy body dementia again. We had discussed even before your NEET PG exam. I had focused on this point. On this question, and you got a question, but the option it was appearing like a Lewy body dementia question, but the option was not there. 
okay there the answer was something else so again there also i emphasized that this is a very important topic you got a question similar question so you may get question on this this is an important topic lewy body dementia why i'm saying this is so because we know that most common most common overall dementia is alzheimers dementia and now the second most common cause second most common cause the the ctp of that is comprehensive textbook of psychiatry kaplan and sedok they mention that now the second most common cause of dementia is lewy body dementia very very important so lewy body dementia you should know the core feature fluctuating cognition visual hallucinations motor features of parkinsonism so this was the question which was asked and patholo in pathology what you will found what kind of bodies will be seen in lewy body dementia lewy bodies you will get lewy bodies so this was the question patient has cognitive symptoms visual hallucinations and there were parkinson symptoms with lewy bodies this was your neat pg question what was the answer the question the option the option did not mention lewy body dementia the second best answer would be please remember a very close differential a very close differential diagnosis of lewy body dementia is parkinson's disease parkinson's disease okay even in parkinson's disease in pathology you may find lewy bodies okay now clinically usually how we differentiate between lewy body dementia and parkinson disease dementia we differentiate in lewy body dementia please understand this in lewy body dementia and parkinson's disease the cognitive symptoms usually come first cognitive symptoms come first and along with this motor symptoms may also be present okay but cognitive symptoms are seen at the onset while in parkinson's disease we see motor symptoms at an onset and the the duration time duration between the motor symptoms and cognitive symptoms to start is at least one year so clinically we can differentiate like this okay so from the presentation or from the symptom chronology we can differentiate so this is a cross differential and this was your neat pg question again lewy body dementia is a very very important topic for your exams i hope this is clear yes let's talk about this question all of the following are drugs used in treatment of dementia except what is the right answer of this again an important topic on the treatment so this is again an important topic of the treatment what is the answer of this question anybody what is the right answer anybody except memantine clonidine adu can you map and donepezil very good yes dr ds dsl yes <coughs> yes okay memantine okay which is not we are asking which of the following is used except <coughs> okay yes shalu okay great so the answer is yes clonidine is not is not used in the treatment rest three drugs let us try to understand this again please see i'll tell you some i'll show you some questions they are asking some question in which you may not know two or three options but you may know the right option we'll talk about that so before you know not attempting a question let's try to see how we can attempt a question which we think we don't know okay now let's talk about treatment of dementia the drugs the assessment which is used in the in the dementia is mini mental status examination mmsc a score of less than 24 out of 30 suggest that a person may be having dementia <clears throat> so let's try to understand the etiology and then let's talk about the mechanism of drug so we know that there is a decrease in the acetylcholine so what is one of the drug we use one drug we use is choline esterase inhibitors so basically acetylcholine is broken down into acetyl and choline by this enzyme so what we are doing is we are inhibiting this enzyme so ultimately what we are doing we are increasing the acetylcholine so you can correlate the etiology also because such questions may also be asked then one drug which was initially of this category tacrin is not used much because it is hepatotoxic other drugs which are used are drugs like donepezil rivastigmine galantamine okay these are choline esterase inhibitor now another important neurotransmitter glutamate we know is increased so we are using a drug memantine which is a nmda antagonist nmda antagonist it is a glutamate it is a glutamate receptor okay so we are using an antagonist anta 
NMDA antagonist. Okay, so cholinesterase inhibitors, memantin. These are two, you know, drugs. Again, these drugs would not cure the illness, but we would say that they would slow down the progression. But now, finally, there is a drug which has been approved by the FDA, ADU Can You Mab? Can you remember? Yes, you can remember. It is MAB. What is MAB? MAB is it is a human IgG1 monoclonal antibody. And this is for one particular dementia. Other drugs we may use in other dementias also. Okay, we may use these the other two drugs we have discussed even in Lewy body dementia. But this is one for one specific dementia. From the name itself, you can see it is for Alzheimer's dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Okay, it binds to the A beta aggregates, <coughs> the amyloid plaques which get deposited in Alzheimer's dementia, they bind to them and they help in the clearance, help in the clearance. So, we have a targeted therapy now. So, now this drug was approved, then you know, we were finally thinking we have a cure, it is given as once a month IV infusion again, but after it has been approved and it now been given again, the evidence is again, it is still being seen, is it, is it that useful or not. But it is a FDA approved drug, so you should know. Many other drugs with similar mechanisms are also there in the pipeline. Okay, so add you can you map? Okay, is it clear to everyone? These are some important drugs. <coughs> then of course, even in dementia, in patients with dementia, you have patients may have neuropsychiatric symptoms. Patient may have depression. Patient may have anxiety. Patient may have delusions, hallucination. So based on those symptoms, we also give some other drugs for managing those symptoms. Okay, so I hope this is clear. <laughs> now, so see this question, such question, this is your last exam question, do not leave such questions before seeing all the options. You may be able to mention because two, three questions were similarly asked recently in the exams. You may think that you do not know the answer, but if you look carefully. So, they are asking you something about Mementin. Okay. So, maintenance dose is 15 to 20 milligram per kg. Again, you may not be able to remember a lot of these doses. Okay, let us see. You have to tell the true option. It is a NMD antagonist. Of course, you know this. It is a NMD antagonist used in alone and not in combination. Again, even if you do not know all the other options, please see you know the right answer. Now, maintenance dose is not this. It, in fact, it starts, we start with 5 milligram per day and we may get, go up to maximum 20 milligram per day. Okay. So, it is not per kg. Per kg would be a very high dose. It is used in combination. In fact, donopezil and mementin combination are there. Also remember, mementin is used for moderate to severe cases. Moderate to severe cases. Okay. It is used for moderate to severe cases, not for mild cases. Okay. <coughs> right. So, yes, it is used and it is metabolized by liver. No, it is by renal metabolism. It is by renal metabolism. So, again, I am saying such questions may be asked wherein you may not know all the options but you may be able to choose, uh, still mark the answer right because you may know the right answer. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? This is very, very important. So, do not, do not, you know, give up on the such question. Look carefully, look carefully. How will you differentiate delirium from dementia in Alzheimer's? So, how will you different delirium versus dementia in Alzheimer's disease? Okay. So, basically, so what is the right answer? Anybody? What is the right answer of this question? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what is the right answer? <coughs> so, delirium and dementia, these are organic mental disorders or neurocognitive disorders. <coughs> How will you differentiate? One very important point in differentiation. Very good. Yes, Shalu, Shitaj, Shereen. Yes, very good. Uh, yes, it is. So, let us, let us talk about both of them. So, delirium and dementia. In fact, delirium is the most common, most common neurocognitive disorder most common neurocognitive disorder. Now, please remember in delirium, there is impairment, there is impairment of consciousness, very, very important. So, here, you know, in the question, you may be told that the consciousness is impaired. For example, they may tell you that there is clouding of consciousness, okay, or they may tell you that there is altered sensorium, altered sensorium, okay. Or they may simply just tell you that the patient is appearing confused, there is confusion. Okay. So, all these terms are telling you that there is impairment of consciousness. This is a very, very important symptom for delirium. Okay. And of course, it is a neurocognitive disorder. So, there is also 
cognitive impairment okay cognitive impairment for example <coughs> language memory those are impaired now while in dementia there is no impairment of consciousness consciousness is clear it is intact yes there is cognitive impairment cognitive impairment in the form of patient may have amnesia okay loss of memory there may be aphasia language impairment there may be apraxia problems in movement fine movement patient is not able to comb his hair button unbutton his clothes or agnosia there is agnosia patient may have difficulty in identifying object faces so cognitive symptoms cognitive impairment is there delirium usually has a acute onset it has a acute onset while dementia may be the may be insidious in certain dementias like vascular dementia it may also be acute but generally it is insidious okay so this is again important so again visual hallucinations can be seen in both in fact in organic mental disorders in organic mental disorders this is a very important point you should know in organic mental disorders which hallucination is more common visual hallucination is more common okay so even in dementia or delirium you can find hallucination so what is the right answer here in this question the answer will be it has a ac acute onset and level of consciousness level of consciousness which will differentiate which will differentiate visual hallucination can be seen in both memory impairment can be seen in both because cognitive cognitive impairment may cognitive impairment occur in both they are neurocognitive disorders okay agitation irritability these are neuropsychiatric symptoms can be present again agitation disorientation may be present again consciousness very very important level of consciousness okay i hope this is clear great a patient consumes alcohol every day for last 10 years he didn't drink for 3 days now presents with tremors seizures hallucinations and altered sensorium which of the following is the treatment of choice first of all tell me the diagnosis what is the diagnosis here patient is having altered sensorium this is a very very important point what is this suggesting just now i told you the patient has altered sensorium that means the patient has now developed delirium along with other symptoms of alcohol withdrawal what is this known as anybody what is this known as very good it is known as delirium tremens very good it is known as delirium tremens and what is the treatment what will be the treatment you will give yes you will give benzodiazepine and thymine is also given so let us talk about alcohol withdrawal alcohol is a very very important topic alcohol is a very important topic so in alcohol withdrawal if the patient decreases or or stop alcohol so what are the important symptoms withdrawal symptoms which occur in 6 to 8 hours the patient may develop tremors and other symptoms like sweating anxiety insomnia so tremors again tremors is the most common or the earliest alcohol withdrawal symptom in the next 6 to 8 hours what may happen the patient is talking to someone nobody is around what is the symptom this is alcoholic alcoholic hallucinosis alcoholic hallucinosis which hallucination will be more here which hallucination will be more here auditory hallucination more than visual hallucination if this withdrawal symptom continue patient may develop in the next 12 to 24 hours patient may develop a rolling of eyes clenching of teeth abnormal jerky movements urinary fecal incontinence what is this seizures alcohol withdrawal seizures also known as rum fits and then the patient if it is more severe withdrawal continues and more severe up to 72 hours high probability patient may develop delirium tremens okay peak delirium tremens may peak from 48 to 72 hours but again it can even occur early please don't go by the duration focus more on the symptom okay so because they may even occur early okay now in delirium tremens which hallucination will be more common very good yes seizures are generalized tonic clonic seizures which hallucinations are more common in delirium tremens anybody visual hallucination more than auditory hallucination how will you differentiate alcoholic hallucinosis from delirium tremens <coughs> in the question we have made the diagnosis delirium tremens based on what based on it's a delirium so there is impairment of consciousness 
there is impairment of consciousness while in alcoholic hallucinosis the consciousness is intact it is intact okay so this is important okay so this is important now again there was a aims question there was a aims question in which they had mentioned that delirium tremens may develop delirium tremens may develop okay and one of the option was gradual withdrawal of alcohol will gradual withdrawal of alcohol lead to such severe symptoms please understand this it is sudden stoppage or sudden decrease of the amount of alcohol which generally leads to these withdrawal symptoms if you gradually stop alcohol the symptoms may be very mild or there may be no withdrawal symptoms so it it may not occur because of gradual withdrawal yes but yes delirium tremens may occur may occur or may is precipitate there is increased risk in withdrawal stage if the patient has infections acute infections if the patient has infections that it may increase the risk of delirium tremens this was the answer infection like hepatitis pancreatitis so infections can increase the risk of delirium tremens okay slow or gradual decrease will not lead to is it clear to everyone Th these are some very important points these have been asked in your exams so we are trying to discuss all these points now let's talk about treatment briefly so in the so first we treat the detoxification or the withdrawal stage drug of choice are benzodiazepines okay so we treat with benzodiazepines and we start with a high dose and gradually we reduce so benzodiazepines like lorazepam clodazepoxide diazepam we can use many a times they may ask you what if the lfts are deranged then which drug will you choose if the lfts are deranged or there is liver cirrhosis or you are waiting for the lft report to come please remember two important drugs liver okay drugs l for lorazepam l for lorazepam o for oxazepam both these questions have been asked in previous exams okay so these are safe to be used in liver disease okay so lorazepam clodazepam diazepam these are some of the benzodiazepines we can use and also you should know the liver safe drugs okay now along with this we also give thiamine so we start with <coughs> with a high dose and gradually so the high dose will take care of the whatever withdrawal symptoms are there depending on that we give the dose of the benzodiazepine and gradually we taper and stop can anybody tell me this is an important fq point you can add in your notes by what percentage we decrease the benzodiazepine every day so suppose i start a patient in delirium tremens let us say we start with 14 mg of 14 14 mg of lorazepam divided over a day and we gradually now then start tapering how do we taper by what percentage again these are some questions which may you can expect in your exams we reduce the dose 20% every day okay 20% per day we reduce so this is this one point you can add in your notes is it clear to everyone a patient is having hallucinations in withdrawals which antipsychotic you will use no no need of antipsychotic <coughs> benzodiazepines are enough seizures will you start some any other antiepileptic no benzodiazepines are you know other treatment for all these withdrawals is it clear to everyone <coughs> now so this is detoxification the next is basically maintenance we'll talk about let me just see yeah. we'll talk about maintenance in a while now next is next question let us see a 40 year old man with history of alcohol so let us take all these pyqs i am try to discuss all the all the pyqs inict pyqs in the session today so that you don't have any you know form of you know fear of missing out all those pyqs and i'm giving you some add on information of all these high yielding topics patient has liver cirrhosis suddenly stops he comes with withdrawals what is the preferred treatment here anyone can anybody tell me what is the preferred very good so you see we have discussed this point patient has liver disease so we may use drugs like lorazepam oxazepam very good next question again it's a previous repeat question oh, this is the same question let us talk about the next question a patient of alcohol dependence with deranged lfts come in withdrawal with seizures what is the treatment again they have mentioned deranged lfts okay so what is the drug you have to you have to start okay you have to give a benzodiazepine which benzodiazepine yes it is oxazepam very good so please see such questions all these questions have been asked in your exams now let's talk about maintenance okay now in maintenance we have two type of drugs one is disulfiram which is known as a aversive agent very good aversive agent okay <coughs> 
what is the mechanism of action of disulfiram you should know this disulfiram is basically aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor okay so alcohol in the body ethanol is is metabolized to acetaldehyde metabolized to acetic acid and carbon dioxide and water so this is the enzyme from acetaldehyde to acetic acid this is the enzyme which we are inhibiting so what happens here is suppose a patient is taking disulfiram daily and now over the top of that the person consumes alcohol so what will happen alcohol ethanol will be converted to acetaldehyde but subsequently it will not be metabolized there will be increase in acetaldehyde patient acetaldehyde is again toxic the patient will develop unpleasant symptoms okay patient may develop symptoms like nausea flushing vomiting so patient will get a message that whenever i am consuming alcohol i am getting these i am getting these unpleasant symptoms so patient may averse himself from taking alcohol okay but yes if the patient consumes high amount it can even lead to respiratory depression and other fatal side effects may also occur so not very commonly used drug but it is one of the methods we can use disulfiram other drugs are anti craving drugs anti craving drugs acamprosate two of the fda approved drugs are acamprosate what is the mechanism of action of acamprosate can anybody tell me what is the mechanism of action of acamprosate it is a nmda antagonist it is a nmda antagonist naltrexone naltrexone is a mu opioid antagonist mu opioid antagonist so let me give you a list of some anti craving agent in fact i have also you know given that list even in the app also in our app also so these are two fd approved antagonist uh, fd approved anti craving agent let me give you some of the anti craving agent which are not fd approved but they are used so you can remember it with the acronym alcohol you have to tell the patient that alcohol is not your best friend okay so this is a list of anti craving agents okay two of the anti craving agents we have already discussed these are fda approved a for acamprosate n for naltrexone okay so i have given some of these mnemonics in the app also so that it becomes very easy for us to learn okay other drugs like ondansetron ondansetron okay topiramate topiramate it is a anti epileptic b b is baclofen baclofen okay and f is it's a ssri fluoxetine okay so you have to tell the patient stop alcohol it is not your best friend so I've given you a list of these okay some such mnemonics again becomes very easy for us to remember okay these are all the anti craving agent the two approved anti craving agents are acamprosate and naltrexone is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone please remember these okay <coughs> right so this question again was asked in the last exam so again when you see such questions again i am saying you don't leave this question at least read them carefully you may know the answer now all of the following are true about disulfiram they are asking accept now initial dose of disulfiram you may not know the dose okay accumulation of acetaldehyde leading to nausea and vomiting this you know it is correct <coughs> it doesn't reduce craving this also you know yes of course you know this you're not talking about this in the anti craving agent okay it is an aversive agent okay and of course we know it is not a alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor it is a aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor even if you don't know the other options please see you don't know the right answer so such questions have been asked repeatedly please remember this very very important is it clear to everyone so this is important right which of the following is true about korsakoff syndrome is true about korsakoff syndrome again it's a previous question what is korsakoff syndrome korsakoff syndrome is a alcohol induced neurocognitive disorder okay what is the right answer here anybody <coughs> anybody what is the right answer shitesh dr akhi yes you have you have marked correct okay confusion of thalmoplegia and ataxia where do you find this do you find this in korsakoff syndrome or do you find it in some other neurocognitive disorder alcohol induced neurocognitive disorder you find it in wernicke's and cephalopathy in fact there were in the last pg neat pg 2023 exam two questions were there on wernicke's and cephalopathy okay but this question of the november 21 is on korsakoff syndrome <coughs> very good 
वर्णिक इज यस यशस्वी यस शरण यस यस अताब ओके ग्रेट सो लेट अस ब्रीफली डिस्कस सो अल्कोहल इंड्यूस न्यूरोकॉग्नेटिव डिसऑर्डर वर्णिकेज एंड कैफ्लोपैथी एंड कॉर्सकॉफ सिंड्रोम वर्णिकेज अकर एक्यूटली वर्णिकेज आई एल गिव यू वन एक्स्ट्रा पॉइंट हेयर इन दिस क्वेश्चन आई एल आस्क यू वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एक्स्ट्रा पॉइंट इन दिस क्वेश्चन राइट नाउ यू आर गेटिंग क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस आई एल टॉक अबाउट दैट वन पॉइंट ऑल्सो विच मे कम एज अ फ्यूचर क्वेश्चन विल टॉक अबाउट दैट सो वर्णिक इज इनकेफल बी सडन ऑनसेट ऑफ सिम्टम्स विद एक्रोनिम यू कैन रिमेंबर गोवा ग्लोबल कन्फ्यूजन ऑफ थेलमोप्लीजिया ओके देर मे बी ऑक्यूलर मसल पैरालिस सिक्स क्रेनियल नर्व मसल इज मोर कॉमनली अफेक्टेड दैन द थर्ड सो सिक्स क्रेनियल नर्व मसल मे मोर कॉमनली दैन थर्ड ओके दैन एनेटेक्सिया सो पेशेंट अपियरिंग कन्फ्यूज आईज आर डिवेटेड टू वन साइड ही इज फॉलोइंग रिपीटेडली दैट इज अटैक्सिया वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस वर्णिक इज एनकेफलोपैथी This question has been asked multiple times. What is the cause of Wernicke's encephalopathy? Anybody? What is the cause? <coughs> the cause is there is deficiency of thymine. Deficiency of thymine vitamin B1. Okay. And how do you treat? You treat it by giving thymine. Okay. <coughs> Wernicke's is reversible. Wernicke's is reversible. <coughs> what what is Korsakoff syndrome now? Korsakoff is a chronic sequelae, okay, and symptoms are amnesia. Amnesia is a important symptom. Symptoms are amnesia, and both anterograde and retro retrograde amnesia occur. Anterograde, anterograde more than retrograde, okay. Both occur, and one very important, interesting symptom confabulation may be seen. What is confabulation? Yes. So yes, different areas in Wernicke's areas such as mammillary body, then there may be thalamus, midline cerebellum. Such areas may be affected. While in Korsakoff, what areas may be affected? I'll talk about that. So areas like mammillary body, okay, and atrophy of the medial, medial thalamic nuclei, hippocampus. These areas may be affected. okay so memory is an important symptom amnesia is seen in in korsakoff syndrome okay confabulation is filling of memory gap with false stories patient does not remember and the, he then forms stories false stories okay again the cause is the same deficiency of thymine treatment is also the same we give thymine but it is irreversible irreversible okay so this is again a very important topic many questions have been asked again and again on this topic okay so here in wernicke's encephalopathy again mammillary bodies are affected then thalamus thalamus is there then there is midline cerebellum is there okay and other areas also are affected peripheral nerves may be affected okay then there may be periaqueductal gray matter area may be affected so these are the areas which are affected now let me ask you a question okay so before this now so what is the answer of this question anybody what is the answer here yeah, very good <coughs> yes avantika correct what is the answer of this question anterograde amnesia with loss of recent memory okay this is seen now let me ask you an fq suppose they give you a clinical picture of global confusion ataxia and ophthalmoplegia and they say that the patient is not responding on thymine there is no response on thymine so you are suspecting it is because of thymine deficiency they say the patient is not responding on thymine what will you do what will be your next step or suppose they ask you the treatment and then the treatment they don't give you thymine so please remember this is a, again an important point such questions may be asked please remember so again this can also be because of niacin deficiency alcoholic pellagra encephalopathy okay in that case if thymine the patient is not responding then we may start or then we may give niacin so this is again important okay this may come as a future question okay is it clear to everyone this is these are some very important points i'm going to give you in this session which may be very helpful for your upcoming exam you're getting such tricky questions you know in the exams they are you know increasing they are increasing the notch okay in every exam so you should know some of these points most efficacious drug in smoking cessation this is again a very very <coughs> common question which has been asked multiple times so both they have given vernicle and bupropion we know these are anti craving agents which are used nicotine gum also is given rimonabent is not uh, used anymore okay so it is an anti obesity drug which was used not used much you know now 
because of side effects, psychiatric, you know, symptoms, side effects, suicidal thoughts. So, what is the answer? So, they have given you all the all the drugs, vernacline, bupropion, and nicotine. What is the right answer? What is the right answer here? Anybody? What is the right answer in this question? Does anybody know? Yes, very good. The right answer is yes. The answer is vernaclin. So, good, very good. The right answer is vernaclin. Answer is vernaclin. <coughs> Let us talk about these. So, another question again, you know, again, similar question. So, please see these questions have been asked again and again, multiple times they are asking these questions. So, right. So, this also here the answer is again verniclin. So, we know in the tobacco in the treatment of nicotine. So, basically what is the psychoactive agent in tobacco? It is nicotine. <coughs> so, we have two strategies. One is we can use nicotine replacement therapy. One of the very common methods we use in the form of gun, gums, lozenges, patches, inhalers, nasal sprays. E-cigarettes are now banned in India and even in worldwide also they are getting advisory because it is also now found to be carcinogenic. Okay? So, these are the five you know important NRTs which is available. Then we have another strategy which is anti-craving agents. So, two important anti-craving agents for tobacco is verniclin. Mechanism of action of verniclin please remember is it is a partial agonist at alpha 4 beta 2. Please remember alpha 4, 4 comes first beta 2 and nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. <clears throat> now, some of the serious side effects, some of the serious side effect is it can increase, increase suicidal thoughts. Now, the, again in now studies it has been found that it may not be that much or there may not be increase, but still there is a warning that it may increase suicidal thoughts. Also, also another important side effect which may occur is cardiovascular side effects, cardiovascular complication especially in patients who have cardiovascular risk factors. So, this is again an important warning with verniclin. And then another drug is bupropion. What is bupropion anybody? What is bupropion <coughs> anybody? It is a NDRI, it is a antidepressant, it is a antidepressant. So, this question has also been asked previously, antidepressant for smoking cessation bupropion. Okay, we will talk about important points about bupropion in a while. <coughs> so, out of these, please remember most effective or most efficacious, most effective drug is verniclin. <coughs> so, if you choose one, then answer is verniclin. Okay, very good. Yes. Is it clear to everyone? Now, lithium again, lithium is a very important topic, very important topic. Just in your last exam, also you have got this question. So, I will talk about lithium. Lithium levels in patient for treatment of acute mania and prophylaxis of mania. <coughs> what is the right answer? Please see, after more than 1.5 milli equivalent per liter, we say it is toxicity has started. So, it is of course not these two. <coughs> so, what are they trying to ask you? They are trying to ask you treatment of acute mania and prophylaxis. So, they are trying to ask you the therapeutic level of lithium. So, what is the right answer here? The right answer is 0.6. Very good. Right answer is yes, Adya, Avantika, Sharin, Shitij, yes, it is 0 0.6 to 1.5. This is very important. <coughs> Few points about lithium. Please remember this person, John F.J. Cade did a lot of studies on lithium, okay, lithium in treatment of uh, mania. Now, therapeutic range is 0 0.5 to 1.5 milli equivalent per liter. In acute mania, it is 1 to 1.5, higher, higher levels are required. In maintenance, 0.6 to 1.2. Again, this may vary in certain books again, but you can go with these values and toxicity as I discussed <coughs> for more than 1.5 milli equivalent. So, again lithium is a very important topic. I will discuss some important points about lithium. Now, <coughs> let us talk about since they are talking about range, one other drug mood stabilizer valproate. Can anybody tell me this? Antimanic response of valproate comes under what level of valproate in the blood? First of all, you should also remember these units. Sometimes they just, you know, give different unit and this is the unit microgram per ml. So, this is again an important FQ which we are discussing. Okay, another important point which we are discussing. Can anybody tell me the range? So, this is again an important point. Such question because they are asking such question, you should be ready. Some important ones. So, what is the answer? It is 50 to 125 
micrograms per ml. So this is again important. <coughs> Please remember, especially for your INICET exam, such questions may be asked in the exam. Very important. So I'll be discussing a lot of such questions in each of these topics. <coughs> Next question: 30-year-old female comes to psychiatry OPD with symptoms of hypomania. There is history of manic episode one year back. So she is a case of bipolar disorder. She is planning to conceive. Which drug should you avoid? Which drug should you avoid? Anybody? <laughs> so valproate is there in the option. So the answer will be valproate. What 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 is the teratogenicity? Teratogenic effect of valproate. Teratogenic effect it causes the neural tube defect. Even lithium causes abstain anomaly. Abstain anomaly. Okay, lamotrigine is a mood stabilizer. Mood stabilizer, which is used only in the depressive phase. Very good. Yes, in the depressive phase, these questions have been asked again and again. Oxcarb again, the uh, evidence for it being used in the in the treatment of mood stabilizer, not very. You know, it's again it's a <coughs> anti-epileptic drug. Again, considered as a mood stabilizer, but role is again questionable. Not very effective. Okay, again, but it also does not. These drugs generally does not have these. Teratogenic effect, but yes, valproate even. So, if you choose between lithium and valproate, then you will not choose. You will not start valproate. Neural tube defect, very higher incidence of neural tube defect than abstain anomaly with lithium. Okay, in fact, in a patient with mania in pregnancy, what is the order of drug? Which first line drugs? There are three first line drugs: antipsychotics, lithium, and valproate. So, which drugs? So, you will consider anti antipsychotic drugs, then lithium and Try to avoid valproate. <coughs> try to avoid valproate. Okay. In some cases, we may have to give, but again, try to avoid as much as possible. Okay. This is again very, very important. Very good. Yes, sildenafil. It is atypical antipsychotics. Good. Interesting name. Now, lithium side effects. Some important points about lithium. So, neurological, it can cause tremors. What is the drug of choice for lithium-induced tremors? Anybody? Drug of choice for lithium-induced tremors is. Propranolol, propranolol. It can also cause endocrine side effects. Please remember hypothyroidism more, more than even, but hyperthyroidism can also occur. Hypothyroidism more. Renal, it can cause polyuria, gradually polydipsia, and ultimately it may even lead to diabetes incipit, diabetes insipidus, because lithium inhibits ADH. Lithium inhibits the effects of ADH, so it can cause these renal side effects. Treatment is fluid replacement. And also, we can give anti-diuretic. We can give diuretics like thiazide or potassium sparing diuretics. Now, one point about this is whenever we give diuretics like thiazide, thiazide they decrease lithium clearance. Okay, so when you give thiazide, it may decrease lithium clearance and it may increase lithium levels. So lithium toxicity may occur. So whenever we start thiazides in a patient who is on lithium. We reduce, we reduce lithium dose. We reduce lithium dose. Okay, then <coughs> also, so we discussed this. Yes, dermatological like acne, psoriasis, alopecia, rash may occur, and teratogenic effect, abstain anomaly may occur one to two per thousand births. Okay, and again, but yes, someone who is on lithium. We we may give lithium, then we have to monitor the person. Ultrasound and echo may be done to monitor it. Okay, abstain anomaly. It's a cardiovascular defect. It's a cardiovascular defect. Now let's talk about this question again. We have talked some important points about lithium. Let us see if we can answer this question. Twenty-five-year-old female having bipolar disorder on lithium. Which of the following is incorrect? We have to tell which of the following is incorrect. So what is the right answer? Anybody? What is the right answer of this question? <coughs> This is correct. We have we just you know just discussed thiazide increase lithium toxicity. We have discussed it is avoided in pregnancy due to its teratogenic effect. This is also correct. Yes, Doctor R J. It is. <coughs> yes, Aditya. Yes, Avantika. Lithium is avoided in pregnancy, isn't it? I am not saying we can can't give, but if possible, you can avoid, isn't it? We have a better option: antipsychotic, caffeine, sherine, shatej, Aditya. Very good. So the answer is hemodialysis. Is useful for lithium toxicity. <coughs> so again, I am discussing some important points <coughs> of lithium. Now, please remember, lithium toxicity may occur. Suppose the patient is in a state of dehydration, okay, or there is excessive sweating. 
पेशेंट हैज इन्फेक्शन ओके दीज में इंक्रीज तो बेसिकली बॉडी ट्रीट्स लिथियम एज सोडियम सो बॉडी ट्रीट्स लिथियम जस्ट लाइक सोडियम सो इन डिहाइड्रेशन स्वेटिंग वट हैपन्स इज द बॉडी ट्राइज टू रीअब्जॉर्ब सोडियम एंड इट ऑल्सो रीअब्जॉर्ब लिथियम सो लिथियम टॉक्सिसिटी इंक्रीज सो देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन इन योर एग्जाम दैट अ पर्सन ऑन लिथियम इज ऑन फास्ट एंड द पर्सन डेवलप सम सिम्टम्स सो दो सिम्टम्स आर बिकॉज द पर्सन वॉज ऑन फास्ट द लिथियम लेवल्स हैव इंक्रीज एंड दोज आर साइंस ऑफ लिथियम टॉक्सिसिटी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इट सो दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट लिथियम टॉक्सिसिटी कैन अकर बिकॉज ऑफ डिहाइड्रेशन स्वेटिंग ओके so lithium toxicity few points about lithium toxicity so mild to moderate when the levels are 1.5 to 2 milli equivalent per liter so we get gi symptoms like there may be vomiting abdominal pain cns symptoms like ataxia nystagmus muscle weakness may be there if it increases moderate to severe it is 2 to 2.5 milli equivalent per liter then gi symptoms like anorexia nausea vomiting more severe cns symptoms like hyperactive deep tendon reflexes convulsions stupor maybe coma and in severe when it is more than 2.5 milli equivalent patients may have generalized convulsions oliguria renal failure and even death so these are some important signs of toxicity this was given a patient on fasting and two days uh, later patient on lithium on fasting develop symptoms of vomiting tremors ataxia nystagmus what what is present lithium toxicity what should you do you should check lithium serum lithium levels this was the answer what to do next okay so you have to check serum lithium levels and how do you treat how do you treat lithium toxicity <coughs> okay we treat it we stop lithium correct hydration and we can remove unabsorbed lithium from the tract by polyethylene glycol by sodium poly polystyrene sulfonate activated charcoal has no role okay activated charcoal has no role in severe cases hemodialysis yes sometimes it is said yes more than 4 yes it is level but in severe cases where we think yes the hemodialysis is now required so we may remove it from the blood okay so yes hemodialysis and sometimes multiple times it is done because lithium again from the tissues come back again redistribution occurs so we sometimes we have to do multiple times hemodialysis okay so this is hemo <coughs> treatment of lithium toxicity so if you go back to this question the answer is this is incorrect lithium toxicity may require hemodialysis <clears throat> all of the following are side effects more with carbamazepine then oxcarb except this is again a inict question again a more of a psychopharmacology question can anybody tell me what is the answer what is the right answer of this question <clears throat> what is the right answer of this question this is your repeat you cannot you know you cannot uh, you know make the pyq is wrong wo that you have to correct okay so what is the right answer more so or uh, all are seen more with carbamazepine than oxcarb except so matlab which is more in oxcarbazepine so what is more in oxcarb very good the answer is hyponatremia this is again very very important few points i will tell you about carbamazepine <coughs> since they have touched this topic let us just discuss few points t half is 26 hours but after some time by 3 to 5 weeks because of auto induction it induces the enzymes the hepatic enzymes which then increase its own metabolism so auto induction so because of auto induction by 3 to 5 weeks of start of carbamazepine the t half decreases to 12 hours <coughs> okay so sometimes even higher dose may be required because T half five decrease. So this is auto induction. This concept occurs with carbamazepine. Few points about carbamazepine. Again, carbamazepine is a mood stabilizer. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, GI side effects. Then CNS side effects like ataxia, drowsiness, blurred vision, diplopia. They may occur. <coughs> Please remember, <coughs> no weight gain as compared to lithium valproate. Lithium valproate may increase weight, may gain weight, but carbamazepine is seen to have no weight gain okay sometimes such comparisons may also be asked you should be again you should know now serious adverse effects with one we have discussed clozapine and carbamazepine were contraindicated if you remember i told you blood dyscrasias like aplastic anemia agranulocytosis may occur hepatitis <coughs> dermatological you know benign macropapular rash may occur and severe severe dermatological serious side effect like steven johnson syndrome can occur with carbamazepine please remember this is again an important point pregnancy is a very important topic 
they are asking questions on pregnancy. So, al along with you know, valpid also causes neural tube defect, carbamazepine causes neural tube defect, cleft palate, even fingernail hypoplasia. These are some of the teratogenic effect of carbamazepine. Okay? So, please remember these. And if we compare it to oxcarb, it has less, less of diplopia, ataxia, no increased risk of severe blood dyscrasia as, as with carbamazepine, decreased risk of rashes there, but there is an increased risk of hyponatremia. This is important. Okay, and this is the question which was asked in your exam. Is it clear to everyone? <coughs> okay, so this is oxcarb. Now, let us answer this question. Let us try to answer this question. Which of the following is true about depression? Again, your previous, now please remember one point. <coughs> I told you one type of question which they are asking. They will give you some option of the drug and one of the answer which you know, may, you know, you know the answer, the right option, other option you may not know. One of the important questions which they are asking now is on epidemiology. So, I will talk about some important epidemiological questions, some important data, I will share it with you. But again, a lot of questions on data and epidemiology been asked. <coughs> And again, you know, in the next also, you know, they have been emphasizing that, you know, questions on, you know, PSM or, you know, community medicine will be there. So, one of the areas in psychiatry where they can ask you questions is on epidemiology, okay. So, what is the right answer? Adults, you know, depression is true, which is true, very good. Adults, female, more than males, very good. So, <clears throat> so again, just few points, you know, lifetime prevalence, 10.8 percent, 1 percent for bipolar, mean age of onset for depression is around 40 years while it is 30 years for bipolar even earlier than for bipolar 1 than bipolar 2. If you talk about males and females, depression female more than male, bipolar 1 it is nearly the same just like schizophrenia <coughs> and bipolar 2 it is females more than male just like depression. Okay, so, even in schizophrenia the prevalence is nearly the same. Now, when we talk about children. We say in children female is nearly equal to, so boys equal to girls, adolescent females more than men and while in adulthood we clearly see more in females than males. So, the, so the right answer of this question is C, okay, in, in children it is equal. Is it clear to everyone? Let me give you a brief about some of the important disorders and the prevalence in the, in which male or female. So, if we see females more than males, we have discussed depression, bipolar 2 disorder. Most of your anxiety disorders, <coughs> panic disorder, agora specific, GAD are more in females except social anxiety disorder. It is more, it is equal in males and females. OCD, OCD again females more than males, in children it is seen more in males. OCD, there is a catch, they say that in the in the clinical uh, clinical study, the patient coming to the clinics, we see the prevalence is same. But in the community studies, we have seen that females more than males. Eating disorders, clearly we have you know discussed borderline personality disorder, red syndrome. Again, we have discussed male and equal to female schizophrenia, bipolar one disorder. Males more than females again, autism spectrum disorder, except red syndrome, ADSD, SLD, Tourette, conduct disorder. A lot of your child. Uh, child psychiatry topic and antisocial personality disorder. So, this is just a brief description of some of those disorders, so that it becomes easy for you to remember. If you see this table, many of your questions will be solved. A mother on SSRI in pregnancy, which of the following chances increases in pregnancy? So, patient is on SSRI. So, this is again a very interesting question. A lot of question on pregnancy have been asked in psychiatry. So, what is the correct answer? <clears throat> what is the correct answer? <coughs> this is an interesting question. So, this is an interesting question. What is the right answer? Yes, correct. Yes, Sildenafil, Aditya, yes. So, you are saying it is D, all very good. This. If you choose one, since you have option of all, you would you know go for that. If you have to choose one, then I would suggest pulmonary hypertension, persistent pulmonary hypertension. Okay, but yes, they have given all as an option, then that will be a better answer. Okay, all will be a better answer. <coughs> now, SSRIs in pregnancy, there are no, not major teratogens. So, some of the SSRIs like sertraline, okay, sertraline, fluoxetin, acetalopram, citalopram, peroxetin, vilazodone. Okay, these are some of the important SSRIs. Now, please remember, all except P for peroxetin, 
P for pregnancy, contraindicated in pregnancy. This is one teratogenic, teratogenic drug out of the SSRIs. So, this may again come as a, as a question. So, which drug you should definitely avoid because it can cause cardiovascular defect. Okay, these are again important points which you should remember. So, again this question may come a lot of question they are asking on pregnancy and they are asking on pregnancy and the drugs. Okay, so, this is very important. Now, when we talk about SSRIs and even SNRIs especially at the late stage of pregnancy, they may not be teratogenic but they may cause persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn. So, there is there is evidence that yes, it can cause persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn. So, this is, so if you have to choose one, then you can go with this, okay. But yes, studies have shown, smaller studies have shown that even other disorders like neurodevelopmental disorders, ADSD, autism, low Apgar score, decreased gestational age or gestational diabetes, okay, preeclampsia, those may also be given. But again, evidence is not very strong. Okay, it's so only small study. So, if you choose one, then you can go with persistent pulmonary hypertension. Since there were options, there were all the words there in the option. So, we will go with option D. Is it clear to everyone? This has been asked recently. You should be aware. I have told you paroxetine contraindicated. Okay. <laughs> now, again, this we have discussed a lot of time. So, just, you know, I would suggest please read about it. You know, postpartum blues, postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis. Okay. Postpartum blues is when the symptoms are not very severe transient symptoms are there, postpartum depression, symptoms are more severe like anhedonia, suicidal, uh, suicidal thoughts are there, okay. Generally, no treatment is required, no treatment is required here. Yes, here treatment is required, we can give SSRIs or CBT. One drug which has been approved only for this condition is Brexanolone. It is a GABA A modulator, okay. This is one drug which is only approved for postpartum depression. In 2019, it was FD approved. Okay. Questions on postpartum psychosis have not been asked. You should be again aware of it. So, patient after delivery <coughs> develops delusions or hallucination. Patient says this baby is not mine or patient is hearing voices telling her to kill the baby. So, postpartum psychosis and how will you treat? You will treat with antipsychotic. This is again an important table. Such questions have been routinely asked in the exam. So, very, very important. Please remember this. A patient with severe depression being treated with TCA, reports of improvement after 4 weeks, which of the following is the most important concern at the time of discharge? Anyone? So, in the initial stage of recovery, what, what may be the what may be your concern? This is again INICT 2020 question. <coughs> what may be your concern? No regular, okay, regular Om Kao, that's an important, that's an interesting point, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. It keeps, yes, CSK is one of the comments. So, we'll discuss maybe, you know, not now, maybe after, the, after the class we can discuss. Yes, SV, yes, yes, increase suicide by, so there is an increase, so there is something known as paradoxical suicide also, which has been asked in your exam and yes, there is some increased risk may be there in the initial stage of recovery. So, you should be very careful. In fact, TCA is because of so many side effects, the patient may also if attempt suicide by consuming TCA, there may be death. Okay. So, yes, suicide risk is high. Also, one point that ask, you know, TCA toxicity. If there is TCA toxicity, how will you treat TCA toxicity? Anyone? Yeah, I think I am audible and visible now. Just, just make a thumbs up and let me know if I am audible and visible now. 
<coughs> so just a small glitch now we will resume I am audible and visible now right right so so tell me is it true yes sodium bicarbonate yes you are correct very good this is true bupropion metazapine again all these have been asked in as your questions also so please remember yes they cause less sexual side effect that is also correct you have to ch choose the incorrect option peroxetine should be avoided in pregnancy we have discussed this bupropion is safe in comorbid bulimia nervosa so bupropion is is Right. So, tell me yes. So, bupropion is safe? No, it is not safe. This is a very important point. You may be asked this question. So, this is an, another important point for your upcoming exams. Let us talk about it. So, bupropion is an NDRI, norepinephrine, dopamine reuptake inhibitor. It has a low risk of sexual dysfunction, sedation and weight gain. Less sexual dysfunction is there. So, this is a one of the drug we can use if the patient is facing sexual side effects or the patient wants a drug which has less sexual side effects. Another important drug which has less sexual side effects anyone yes we have discussed metazapine ok. These are again two drugs both the questions have been asked in your previous exams. Now then what are the side effect important side effect with bupropion is seizure especially at higher doses especially at higher doses. So, bupropion of course, you will you will not give bupropion. So, we will not use bupropion in a seizure disorder patient. Yes, yes and also we will not use it is contraindicated in this eating disorder such as bulimia nervosa, anorexia nervosa where we know that the patient has because of so many complications <coughs> in anorexia nervosa because of not taking food there may be electrolyte disbalance in bulimia nervosa also because of repeated self induced vomiting there may be risk of seizure. So, these are contraindicated. So, these is again an important point they you know such questions can be asked such question can be framed a lot of such clinical scenarios have been asked. So, very very important points which of the following antidepressant has leached sexual side effect again we have discussed this question it has been asked mirtazapine. Is it clear to everyone? So, again I am discussing all these important topics and I am giving you some extra edge topics some questions so that you can again answer those questions if asked in the exam. All are true about bipolar disorder except. So, again such epidemiology questions as I was telling you have been asked. Prevalence is in bipolar 1 is same and 2 is more in women this is correct. Suicide rate in bipolar disorder 5 to 10 percent let us see we will come to that. Most common age of onset of bipolar disorder is 35 to 45 years. No, we have discussed the mean age was 30 years and even for bipolar disorder it was slightly early. So, this seems to be an incorrect statement. Prevalence of bipolar 1, 1 percent is correct. Suicide rate somewhere some place it mentions 5 to 15 percent. So, yes it seems to be a correct statement. So, overall the wrong statement out of all the four is option C. So, please see such questions have been asked. We have discussed about the age. So, of course, even if you are not confused with the other options, we know the C option is incorrect, right? The C option is incorrect. Very good. Yes, yes, Sildana Fields, yes, Dr. RJ. Now, this question again, such match the following questions have also been asked. So, let us try to answer. <coughs> so, pyromania, what is pyromania? It is setting fire. So, patient has difficulty to control the impulse, set fires. Kleptomania is stealing things of little value. Mutilomania as the name suggests mutilomania mutilating body parts or something like this or some such option was there and the last is dipsomania compulsive alcohol drinking. So, what is the right answer? So, A is 3, B is 4, C is 2 and D is 1. So, is it clear to everyone such question again just a you know glimpse of impulse control disorder in ICD 11. Pyromania we have discussed recurrent. So, patient has difficulty to control the impulse. It is not that he is angry on someone he set fire. He says I am not able to control this impulse and he set fire. Kleptomania is stealing, but he is not stealing for monetary benefit for personal use. He is not able to control. There is a new impulse control disorder in ICD 
इलेवन कंपल्सिव सेक्शुअल बिहेवियर डिसऑर्डर रेपिटेटिव सेक्शुअल अर्जिस टूवर्ड्स सेक्शुअल बिहेवियर ओके इट्स नॉट अ पैराफिलिया पैराफिलिया इज एब वेन द सेक्शुअल बिहेवियर इज एब नॉर्मल हेयर नॉर्मल सेक्शुअल बिहेवियर बट पेशेंट इज नॉट एबल टू कंट्रोल इट देन इंटरमीडियंट एक्सप्लोजिव डिसऑर्डर रेपिटेटिव ब्रीफ एपिसोड ऑफ अग्रेसन विच आर आउट ऑफ प्रपोर्शन टू द स्ट्रेसर ओके सो दीज आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट इम्पल्स कंट्रोल डिसऑर्डर्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ नोवल एंटी डिप्रेशन सो इट्स इट्स अ क्वेश्चन इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सो ऑप्शन आर विलाजोडॉन ब्लोनैनसरिन ल्यूरासीडॉन असिनापिन सो आउट ऑफ दीज फर्स्ट वी शुड नो यस विलाजोडॉन इज एन एंटी डिप्रेसेंट ब्लोनैनसरिन इज अ एंटी साइकोटिक ल्यूरासीडॉन ऑल्सो एन एंटी साइकोटिक एजीनापिन इज ऑल्सो एन एंटी साइकोटिक ओके सो यस द आंसर इज विलाजोडॉन कैन एनी बडी टेल मी वॉट इज द वॉट इज द रूट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एसिनापिन वॉट इज द रूट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इट इज गिवन सब लिंगली इट इज गिवन सब लिंगली सो वाई इट इज अ नोवल एंटी डिप्रेशन नोवल बिकॉज ऑफ द मैकेजम ऑफ एक्शन सो इट इनबिट्स रिएपटेक ऑफ सेरेटोनिन just like ssri so we have included under ssri but it also has <coughs> 5st1 a partial agonist action so a slightly different action from the conventional medicine so it's a novel antidepressant it is also sometimes referred to as pari serotonin partial agonist and reuptake inhibitor okay also me mentioned as pari okay so velazodone it maybe has a slightly you know slightly quicker you know onset of action than the conventional ssris okay so the right answer is vilazodon so one again you know one drug i want you to understand this is again a newer drug relatively newer drug vortioxetin again question may come on vortioxetin so you just few points about this drug it is a serotonin modulator and stimulator so some of the important action so you can remember it like this it is a agonist it is a agonist at 5ht 1a partial agonist at 1b antagonist at 1d 5ht 3 and 5ht 7 okay and also it is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor vortioxetin so try to you know make it easy for you to remember the action vortioxetin it's a serotonin modulator and stimulator now one important you know vortioxetin is you know currently available for use okay many brands are there with for vortioxetin now it is you know one of the drugs which has been you know marketed that it has less sexual side effects okay but yes it does have it's not that it does not have side effects you know the books you know clearly mention yes they have side effects sexual side effect but you know comparatively less okay so again it is one of the drug with less sexual side effects okay so vortioxetin okay yes we'll share the pdf don't worry you'll get the pdf in the telegram group don't worry about the pdf you'll get it now a 40 year old male patient comes to psychiatry opd with complaints of repetitive thoughts of his hands being dirty thought he knows that you know they are clean he knows they are his own thoughts and he you know it gives them discomfort hence he starts repeatedly washing so what is the diagnosis first tell me what is the diagnosis of this patient what is the diagnosis of this patient the diagnosis of this patient is <coughs> ocd now the, again some controversy please remember ocd obsession it's a disorder of it is a disorder of please remember it is a disorder of possession of thought very good yes wanderer vega very interesting name wanderer vegas yes so the answer is correct it is disorder of possession please remember this it's a disorder of possession of thought <coughs> so obsessive compulsive disorder okay so there are repeated obsessions and compulsions on and you know as as i've repeatedly discussed obsessions with the acronym rosy so i hope you remember so r is repetitive thoughts images or impulses patient has patient knows these are my own thoughts but patient knows these are senseless okay irrational and the patient wants to stop but he is not able to resist these are irresistible he is not able to stop them so obsessive compulsive disorder compulsions are repeated these are repeated acts okay so now these are ego ego dystonic ego dystonic patient no patient you know <coughs> knows that these are irrational and these are not accepted by his mind he wants to get rid of them but he is not able to control it 
so that is why it is a disorder of possession okay obsessive compulsive disorder which of the following statement is true about ocd <coughs> again you know please see such questions come and you know again let us try to understand you have to tell the true statement so is a true a typical antipsychotics are the first line treatment no first line treatment are ssris clomipramine these are the drugs and we use therapy like cbt like erp these are the first line treatment it is false most common comorbidity is depression let us see the other option contamination is an uncommon obsession no it is in fact the most common obsession prevalence is around 2 to 3 percent this is also wrong so yes the correct is most common comorbidity is depression please understand patient is you know these are ego dystonic symptom patient knows that these are senseless thoughts but he is not able to control them so please understand what you know what distress the patient is having so yes patient may also develop depression so co most common comorbidity with ocd is depression so obsession and compulsions again we have discussed so we have discussed about the treatment so treatment first line treatment is ssri and one tca clomipramine also is used clomipramine is also used okay but if you have to choose drug of choice it is ssri because of left side if less side effect come so and in the in the pharmaco in the psychotherapy okay one point about this is augmenting agent please remember this augmenting agent augmenting agent means we may use some drugs to increase the effect of the first line drug so what is the augmenting what augmenting agents may be used for ocd this has been asked previously in your exams very good bhaskar very good yes so augmenting agents like antipsychotics they are not the first line drugs but they are augmenting agents so these are the drugs and in the therapy therapy we use exposure and response prevention and yes if you are asked treatment of choice then the therapy treatment of choice yes other drugs may be used but this is yes one of the augmenting agents <coughs> correct treatment of choice is a combination of drugs and therapy okay drugs and therapy in which of the following risperidone again a very interesting question is not useful as an off label drug so risperidone is a second generation antipsychotic second generation antipsychotic so please see such you know they have tried to club in a lot of disorder in this one question so it's a very interesting question but let us see <coughs> ocd we have discussed yes it can be used as an augmenting agent dementia i told you in dementia i told you that in the neuropsychiatric symptoms if the patient develop delusions hallucinations or severe agitation we can use antipsychotics bipolar disorder yes bipolar disorder in fact it is one of the first line drug only okay no use in post traumatic stress disorder okay so the right answer is ptsd right answer is ptsd okay right great now a female patient having recurrent distressing thoughts of dirt and contamination leading to repeated hand washing this we have discussed psychotherapy of choice this is again your question asked in the previous year such questions have been asked again and again the answer is erp please remember if specifically erp is mentioned exposure and response prevention this will be the right answer right i hope this is clear is it clear to everyone now let's talk about this question a patient underwent surgery and a mass of hair was found in the stomach which specialist should be consulted so what is this mass of hair this is a trichobezoar this is a mass of hair so it has taken the form of you know shape of the stomach so you know again it seems to be a surgery question but they are asking you where to send the patient this may occur because the patient is swallowing the hair trichophagia trichophagia is occurring may because the patient is plucking the hair okay so patient has trichotillomania patient has trichotillomania where will you refer very good you will refer to a psychiatrist <coughs> let us say another image based question is given and let us say the patient scalp there are you know hairs of different length okay there is alopecia irregular shaped alopecia <coughs> okay and the hair of different length again this patient of alopecia appearing to be having a hair loss where will you send this patient this is another important interesting question which can come so where this patient <coughs> where this patient 
in fact let us say this is a skin this is on the skin not on the scalp let us say this is on the skin so there is a skin <coughs> okay and in fact there is a skin lesion this of course if there is hair this is trichotillomania suppose there is a irregular there is a irregular patch of you know the skin there is some irregular patch of skin is affected okay and as if the skin is peeled off again where will you send this patient to will you send it it's an irregular patch irregular patch okay again it may be sent to the patient may be having excoriation excoriation okay let us talk about this i'll talk about this in a while which of the following is a body focused repetitive behavior disorder let's talk take this question and then we'll discuss on this question we'll discuss some important obsessive compulsive and related disorder this is your again june 2021 question so which disorder is under body focused repetitive behavior disorder in icd 11 what is the right answer of this question anyone what is the right answer very good it is trichotillomania very good it is trichotillomania so let's take see this table <coughs> so if you know again given you some changes which have been made in dsm <coughs> and icd so dsm 5 has made you know has added a added a concept of obsessive compulsive and related disorder and similar concept is also added in icd 11 so under this obsessive compulsive and related disorder in dsm 5 important so what are the important terms which have been added here which are it important disorders ocd of course the name is suggesting you body dysmorphic disorder then hoarding disorder trichotillomania and excoriation disorder right <clears throat> now in icd 11 they have also added ocd dysmorphic body dysmorphic disorder and hoarding disorder they have added a category of body focused repetitive behavior disorder the name is telling you something is focused on the body part okay on the body so here they have added trichotillomania and excoriation disorder okay so this was the answer then there is another disorder under this olfactory reference syndrome what is this patient is preoccupied that he is emitting a foul smell although there is he is not able to you know experience any smell but he he is preoccupied he is thinking that he is his body is emitting a foul smell this is olfactory reference syndrome and hypochondriasis wherein the patient is preoccupied of having a serious illness so these are the important disorders under icd 11 so please have a look such questions have been asked again and again in the exams so you should be careful because this is a pyq <clears throat> a male patient who lost his job one week back reports of irritability and sad mood <coughs> he was more irritable at home but was able to enjoy movie with friends when he would occasionally go out so he is appearing sad but you know when he is going out he is enjoying what is the likely diagnosis what is the likely diagnosis anybody what is the answer of this question what is the answer of this question anybody so, yes very good it is adjustment disorder very good it is adjustment disorder there is a mild to moderate routine stressor stressor is there and mild to moderate routine stressor like financial stressor or <clears throat> there is some relationship problem here the patient is, is lost the job and patient has developed emotional emotional and behavioral symptoms these are mild symptoms okay patient has not developed full you know full blown depressive symptoms or gad symptoms okay so these are emotional behavioral symptom milder symptoms which may occur after the stressor so this is adjustment disorder very good yes <coughs> so trauma or stress related disorder when there is a trauma may be divided into two one if it's a major life threatening trauma or if it's a mild or moderate routine stressor so major life threatening trauma like many times they give you this accident or there is a natural disaster okay or there is some war or there is history of abuse okay or there is a very serious illness so after this if the person develop symptoms so then we call it as two important disorders one is ptsd and the other is acute stress disorder so ptsd again we have discussed you know what are the symptoms you know in the previous sessions you would be knowing so we have learned with the acronym mahi okay so patient has mood and cognitive symptoms avoidance symptoms hyper arousal symptoms and intrusion symptoms okay so difference is when the symptoms last for more than one month it is ptsd <coughs> when symptoms are less than one month 
it is acute stress disorder. While if the stressor is a very mild to moderate routine stressor, for example, some financial issues, some my, you know some <coughs> not so major chronic illness, some relationship problem, then the patient may develop adjustment disorder. Please remember adjustment disorder is a diagnosis of exclusion. That means it is not the first disorder you should that should come to your mind when you are making a diagnosis. For example, in this case, suppose the patient had you know low mood, decreased interest, decreased sleep, decreased energy, decreased appetite, if all those symptoms would have been present, you know, let us say more than two weeks, then the better answer would have been depression. Here, no other disorder seems to be likely diagnosis, it is adjustment disorder. Okay. Now, this question, a young girl after death of her mother suddenly becomes blind, but seems to be less bothered about her blindness. Okay. So, she seems to be blind, but she is not bothered, which of the following is true about the condition? So, first tell me what seems to be the likely diagnosis. She does not seem to be bothered, it suggests that it may not be a, <coughs> a actual you know true blindness, it does it, it seems to be you know some other symptom may be created by mind. Okay. So, what is this, what is the diagnosis here? There are some neurological, it, it seems to be a neurological symptom. Okay. So, the answer yes, the it is conversion disorder, very good conversion disorder, very good. Conversion disorder, patient has neurological symptoms, but there is no cause, though no neurological cause. These are also known as functional neurological symptom disorder. So, neurological symptoms which are functional, there is no neurological cause, very good. <coughs> so, and please remember, so what is the right answer? What is the right answer? It is Yes, it is more common in females than males, both in children as well as in adults. Okay. It is more common in females, conversion disorder. What is this symptom? That she, you know, she has become blind, but she is less bothered about bothered about the symptom. Yes, someone has men mentioned very good. Yes, very good, Imam. Yes, this is la bella indifference. La bella indifference is there is you know careless attitude towards a serious symptom you know if any of us you know you know become blind you know we will be very distressed but this person is hardly bothering so this is la bella indifferent they are indifferent to these serious symptoms okay identifying the stage of the sleep of sleep given in the image so let's try to identify this sleep <coughs> stage again this is a may 2022 question let's try to see now see in the eeg you find you know again there is high frequency waves, high frequency waves are there and again if you see if you notice they seem to be yes very good sore tooth appearance very good sore tooth appearance EMG, EMG seems to be very less or significant you know there is you know muscular EMG electromyogram is showing not much movements and EOG yes EOG is showing movement fast. So, which state is it? which state when the EOG again of course, from the name itself we know rapid eye movement in REM the EOG is fast. Okay, there is sawtooth appearance and in REM we know that EMG it is in a, so muscles are in a state of paralysis. <coughs> okay, so, they are basically on EEG we get beta alpha waves with the sawtooth appearance. So, the right answer is very good, it is REM. So, again B you know such question you should mark you know again they have been asked previously. So, we know in the sleep NREM and REM there are two state first we get NREM then after some time there is REM. 75 percent of the time we spend in NREM, 25 percent of the time we spend in REM. N1 we spend 5 percent, N2 45 percent. So, maximum time we spend in N2 and N3 we spend 25 percent. Okay. So, these are some important stages. Now, also so, so, these are some important stages. Let us take up the next question and then we will discuss in more detail. EG finding of a sleep state is depicted in the image below. <coughs> Which of the following is not true, not true about the sleep state? Let us try to answer. Let us try to answer this. Tell me which of the following is not true? A, B, C, D. Let us see who answers it first. Which of the following is not true? Okay. So, again such questions may be asked. Okay. So, so you see in the EEG, you see some sudden burst of activities, 
sudden burst of activities what are these known as these are known as sleep spindles these are known as sleep spindles and these sharp negative and positive wave these are known as k complexes please remember n2 n2 has two eg findings one is k complex then the other is sleep spindles okay so yes it is eg has sleep spindles and k complex very good very good imam yesasvi sharin shitij very good maximum time we have discussed we spend here it is n2 i movements are fast no these are nrem it's a nrem stage name is telling you non rapid i movements so, so the correct answer is option d very good a 7 year old child comes with history of bed wetting since one year you know at twice a week organic causes have been ruled out you know with the investigation result the following the initial treatment now okay so basically we are dealing with aneurysms usually we say by 5 years there is control over the bladder control over the bowel you know by 4 years control over the bladder by 5 years but the child is not you know still not achieved control aneurysms so what is the treatment where so what is the treatment here please tell me the answer so we have two treatment one is non pharmacological and the other is pharmacological so in the pharmacological which is the treatment method of choice yes bell and pad you know classical conditioning again we attach a pad you know you know on the undergarment or on the bed sheet and if it becomes wet there is a bell okay so this is the initial method this is the initial treatment plan pharmacologically in the drugs in pharma some of the drugs we have is desmopressin desmopressin we use it is used as a nasal spray okay it is used as a nasal spray even drugs like imipramine may also be used okay so the right answer is option c okay yes bladder training is also also done but initial treatment plan would be you know again is you know if to choose one this is bell and this is the first line treatment or the best evident first line treatment method okay we have ruled out organic causes okay is it clear to everyone now let's talk about this again paraphilias is again a small topic do read it thoroughly such questions may come okay so again it may come in even in forensic medicine so this has been asked so let us see what is fruiterism it is touching or rubbing non consenting partner exhibitionism is as the name suggest exposing genitalia to strangers necrophilia is sexual pleasure with corpse necrophilia dead necro means dead eonism is another name for transvestism wearing female clothes by male and they getting sexual gratification getting sexual gratification so right so the answer is option d so again i am telling you this is an important topic do read it carefully questions may come from this okay is it clear to everyone right again now i am talk discussing you know these some you know last questions these are pyqs some from the miscellaneous topics so many times when these question come it appears to be as the first you know first time we reading this but sometimes when you read the question carefully you may be able to mark the correct answer so the question which was asked in november 2022 was correct definition of stress so if i just give you this question so you know what will be the answer you will mark first is it is an adaptive response to situation that result in physical emotional and psychological strain seems to be correct it's a mental tension only is it mental or physical symptoms may be there let us see stressors can only be external and not internal is it can't the stressors be internal of course they can be internal it is not based on your personality and experience of course it is a lot of us you know a lot of us you know a same situation may be stressful for one and it may not be stressful for the other person so again it all you know again it also depends on your personality or your inner experiences so out of all these please you know whenever you are attempting such questions try to see you may be able to mark the right answer in the exam and be prepared with one or two such questions which may come okay so the right answer is yes it is an adaptive response okay to a situation that result in physical emotional and psychological strain very good all of you have marked it very correctly so again you know <coughs> will not go into the detail again you know stress by hans eile you know it's a non specific body response you know caused by pleasant or unpleasant condition it can be used stress you know stress can also be you know pleasant and it can be distress there is general adaptation syndrome you know syndrome wherein there is first al alarm reaction then the you know stage of resistance body starts becoming resisting and ultimately there may be stage of exhaustion 
so again as i was telling you event can you know stressful or not it may depend on the nature of the event and also depends on the person's personality coping or his experiences the more you know you know you have given more exams you know you've given your board exams and you've given your prof exams so now you know these exams may appear easy for you so based on your previous experiences okay so give more gts give more gts and you know give more of these tests so that when you give the exam you already had that experience at the back of your mind you know so and then those that stress will be less so that is why we say repeat, repeatedly you should give these exams is it clear to everyone now match the following with respect to physicians mental health again this was asked in the recent exam so tell me <coughs> so let us try to match burnout what is burnout anybody what is burnout anybody so burnout is basically getting psychosomatic symptoms like exhaustion at workplace which are relieved off duty the person is you know again in covid a lot of mental health workers you know they they you know they had experienced this burnout what is overworked overworked is four yes exceeding one's ability to work suicide suicide again relationship fallout is a risk factor more seen in substance use yes in fact in you know normally we say suicide is more in males than females but in physicians we seen it is more in female physicians okay and depression then last is depression difficult to diagnose you know sometimes yes sometimes people don't you know come out you know and you know so the answer is d is 1 okay so again such questions again may appear to be new question but sometimes when you try to match these option you may be able to get the right answer okay so such of such miscellaneous questions one or two question you may expect in your exams so again burnout you know in burnout what happens there is depersonalization loss of empathy and compassion is there because of you know again because of a lot of work because of decrease contact with the family members during the you know lockdown so many many of the moment <coughs> the health workers they had experienced burnout there is emotional exhaustion and a decrease sense of accomplishment may be there okay so this is a triad of burnout okay very good next is again this is again a miscellaneous topic try to attempt you know try to see match match these and let us see oneroid what is oneroid anybody in this let's start again what is oneroid oneroid is you know let us wait let us see things which we may know more clearly persecution what is persecution anybody persecution will match with which of the options persecution will match with a is 3 good very good c is c is 2 very good so persecution now please is mental subnormality oligo means less phrenia schizophrenia we know no split mind phrenia means mind so again it is matching with it's a old term again these are old terms you know sometimes not used okay twilight state again we know twilight is there is what what is twilight there is impairment in consciousness so what is oneroid oneroid is another term for onio onirophrenia so this is again these are old terms old terms oneroid basically means dream like state okay dream like state so this is how sometimes we have to match please try to see the names i always say see the names many a times you will get the answer okay so twilight we had discussed it's basically impairment of consciousness abrupt onset unexpected violent acts may also be occur it may be seen in you know brain injury epilepsy dream like or oneroid state is patient may appear disoriented confused hallucinations are also seen especially visual okay now a 10 year old child presents with selective mutism he is most likely suffering from again it's an old question selective mutism and comes under which diagnosis anybody selective mutism is it hyperkinetic disorder no we don't think so childhood psychosis no does not seem so so out of a or c which 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 is the correct answer which is the correct answer very good the correct answer is it is childhood anxiety disorder selective mutism basically as the name suggests failure to speak in social situations where it is expected to speak for example in school despite speaking in other situations so family members say the child is speaking at home so selectively he is you know he is having mutism at school so this is selective mutism it comes under anxiety disorders treatment is cbt 
and sometimes we also use SSRIs. Okay. So, these were the important PYQs, important topics. I have given some important points also. Some of the questions I have discussed, very high chances of, you know, few drugs I have discussed, high chances to come in the upcoming exam. So, be very thorough with these. You know, these are the topics, psychopharmacology, substance, epidemiology. These are some of the important topics which are asked. So, this is all for today. Thank you everyone for the patient listening. Again, in the end, I always say this, keep smiling, keep moving forwards, ho jayega. things will happen, okay, you will clear the exam. So, do not worry and all the very best, may you do excellent in your exams. Okay, sir.